we go. Just as <laughs> greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dan Latham, also known as Shedrick Degar, and welcome to Roll Hit Die Presents Dungeons with Veterans. Uh, I laugh because the moment I ask everybody if they're ready to go and I hit the button, Todd gets up and walks away. <laughs> so, uh, this is our continuing campaign of a homebrew of my making. And uh, I'm sure you know everybody who's here, but uh, I'm going to let them introduce themselves anyway for those who are new to the show. So, starting right below me with a guy rolling his eyes. Who? <laughs> you! Exactly. Hello. My name is Curtis Ross. I am playing Surge, the Wild Hunt Shifter, Circle of the Moon Druid. Seeing how much trouble I can get other people to cause, you know, teaching small children magic, because why not? It's totally not my this is fault. Why. It's not a bad idea. It's a learning. You know, small children would have been better than uh, a teenager. So. <laughs> That's just my thing. They're fine. See, they have a mentor now. They can burn down an entire forest. It's not my problem. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's that guy's problem now. Yes, it is his problem, isn't it? It's certainly not mine. Following mm -hmm. Surge, we have Sergeant Rock. Hi there, I'm Fritz Neufeld. I'm a retired Air Force Reservist, and I've got uh, Sergeant Rock, who's a World War II soldier, who has wound up in this land and is still kind of trying to figure things out. He's actually a warlock with everything reskinned into World War II soldier terms. So, for instance, uh, Shatter is Frag Out. And next up is Corporal Punishment. I am Christy. I volunteered for way too many things in my life, and now I am retired and all that. I play Corporal Punishment, who is a tiefling paladin. He has her trusty alicorn, Fred, who's hopefully going to be a daddy soon. And uh, he's a little lost in this world right now, but oh well. And next up is the singed but still alive Brother Mayo. Hello, I am Marcus Scott. I am former Air Force. I am playing the group's cleric slash warlock. And this is why you don't teach kids to play with fire. <laughs> Very topical. And last but and certainly not least. You are muted is who you are. <laughs> I didn't think we could meet that guy. <laughs> <laughs> not working. Try smacking the monster. Working. We can't hear you. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Try sign language, Todd. Yeah, I'll just type it in the chat. Yeah. It was working just before we started. It was. What's our game if it doesn't have any technical issues? Hey, this might be the most quiet he's ever been, oh. so we should be thankful. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that would be... Todd, who's still having issues with his sound. As soon as he gets that scored away, he's playing Demolt, who we all call Ducks because nobody really wants to spend the time to pronounce Demolt for some reason. Yeah. And he is our multi-classing monk slash rogue slash barbarian, correct? Mm. Okay. I also picked up something new last time. I don't know if he, picked, he probably shouldn't have picked up anything new last time. So, yeah, I think it's Sorcerer now as well. No, <laughs> no it's not. That, just an instrument, maybe a bard taller. I'm a tailor. Or later. <laughs> Typos. All right, go ahead. Uh, and when you get back, just chime in so we know that we got some sound with you. All right. 
So out of the four that are left, uh, would anybody like to give us a recap of what happened uh, last session? Well, hey, uh, was that, uh, that Sarge's way of saying he had notes? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, All right. uh, Go ahead then, Sarge. No. All right. <clears throat> 19 July, episode 37. After a short rest, we headed towards the uh, Druid's position, having uh, just defeated that, that crazy Nagpa. And uh, <clears throat> the kid decided to join old Rock in the back of the party because Rock likes to ride sweet, where Rock I taught, him, uh, taught him some new Jody calls. So we found a variety of ways to enhance that kid's life. <laughs> so we had to bushwhack cross country to follow the, uh, the Druid markers. There weren't any roads. Um, but as we were bushwhacking our way along, some kind of uh, critter jumped out at us and grabbed the kid. Of course, we didn't like that. We couldn't spot this thing either. It was super hidden, like some sort of super camouflage or something like that. It was an invisibility because a uh, kid was near rock and rock's got that witch site thing so anyway uh one of our other party members cast uh locate object on the kid's shirt and uh, we determined that the kid was uh ahead of us when we moved forward we found that there was a great chasm of eternal peril spanning an area that we could not cross so we were trying to figure out how to get to that kid. I was thinking maybe dimension door, uh, but we did figure out there's some kind of shield around the place that prevents any teleportation in. So we're getting a little discouraged, and then uh, some freaky elf types appeared out of nowhere with bows pointed at us. They seemed like they were going to be hostile. <clears throat> um, then uh, the kid kind of stepped out across the chasm and waved at us so we could tell these guys were the ones who had the kid. Uh, then another, uh, what everybody thought was an Eldrin showed up, except for Rock with his witch sight, he was able to determine that this Eldrin was a gold dragon. And he teleported the whole lot of us into his court. <clears throat> his name was Apilium. And uh, he's some kind of super druid. He's, he's part of the land. And uh, we told him our, our business was to bring this guy to apprentice with uh, the Weather Witch. And uh, he decided that he would take the kid on. So that went pretty good. He whomped up a big chow hall for us. And uh, there was plenty of chow to be eaten. Uh, of course, Rock. He got whatever he wanted, right? If you thought about it, you got it. So Rock got something good in American turkey with dressing and pumpkin pie <clears throat> with the appropriate amount of whipped cream, which is 50-50 uh, by weight. <laughs> and there was plenty of wine to be had, too. So there was plenty of imbibement going on. But eventually the druid needed uh, some business, and he cast some kind of... Uh, super greater restoration that affected all of us and we were all instantly sobered up which was a little disappointing but probably for the best we uh, discussed our anti-lich mission with the pelium and uh, uh we also mentioned that the the enemy has a group of kids that were taken from uh, the village on the island way down south but the druid he uh, wants to play swiss he's he's wants to remain neutral he doesn't want to get involved with the affairs of man he says he's done so before and just made things worse and he didn't like the whole effect even though we explained that these kids are being tormented genetic experiments horrors of all sorts um the dragon went so far as to give us some information at least we know in general that the kids are are uh, over an adjacent land come come the your and uh we got a tip of where we might look for them. And yeah, we, uh, we got a little bit more information about the history of how the, uh, the Feywild was interfaced with this land and it caused an invasion. And uh, our friend Apilium just doesn't want to get involved. 
but we did manage to convince him to teleport us to Barrymore so that we can at least get onto our task since he had to teleport us somewhere anyway to leave his his little grove. So he chose to beam us all the way over there. Um, he did seem to know that in Barrymore, there's some guy who was a friend of Apillion who was being tortured. And uh, so I think that was part of the reason he was willing to beam us there. We might be able to help his friend out. We also got a bunch of gifts before we got beamed out. Rock got a really cool cloak, which he thinks is a cloak of elven kind. It's invisibility. That is big camel. <clears throat> and uh, we got some saddlebags that'll provide us with plenty of food. Um, everybody else got some pretty cool gifts. And then we teleported right outside and south of uh, the port town of Barrymore. And that's where we'll be picking up here with our invasion of Barrymore. Invasion. Yes, we are invading that's the one, giant city. One. So give me a D20. Good. Roll. Came through. Got you, Todd. Come on, D20. Let me do that. 12. A dozen good things. All right, let's see. You get to avoid a fumble. Mm, there you go. That ought to work out real well for this crew. Yeah, we heard you. You came through. Uh, Todd. Yeah, Kurt said you did. I, I didn't talk and I didn't hear you. All right, so. It's nighttime. What are y'all doing? Okay. And we're south of the city, right? Yep. Yeah, and you're we're just outside, outside of it. It, it was like right here, Rish. And we decided to skip this town and go somewhere else, right? Ah, uh, yeah, I think that's the plan, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> For those budding DMs out there, see what you have to deal with. <laughs> It's like, hey, now that we're right back next to this big city, we can go in and find a way through the mountain or just go over it. Sure. Yeah. Well, I'll make a choice. There <laughs> might be places to stay there, some proper housing. We've been doing a lot of camping. Maybe it's even a big enough city they'll have someplace nice to stay. Oh, and I also heard tell that there was a tattoo master here that I wanted to speak with. Oh, well, mm -hmm. That's probably going to be morning. I imagine he closes up shop. Yeah, you know, I'm just saying, I don't want to fly over the town and go straight to the mountain. Yeah. Yeah, I was mainly joking. <laughs> yeah, we were asking Dan to put all this, this work into this town. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, all the work I put into things, and y'all don't do them. It's okay, fine, we'll just hit the under not. construction sign. <laughs> 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 all right, so... We can uh, try and make our way in, or... Uh... We can set up camp out here. What do y'all think? No camping. Uh, we have a I city. We should go in. There's an inn. Let's go in. To the city. Yep. Yeah. The yep. Guards I mean, outside look take like a they're look harassing. We're by. And... Oh, I, I forgot, no, though. It's... it's a walled city, and there's some, uh, some nasty-looking guards that seem to be scrutinizing everybody like this. Yeah. All right, so you're making mm -hmm. your way towards the city? Yeah. Can we tell if the guards are just still in checks or if they're actually harassing people trying to get in? Give me a perception. We'll find out. Yeah, hey, I'm good at those. I can take a peek. <laughs> they, they look like they're maybe inspecting as far as you can tell. Without advantage. Oh, I didn't roll with advantage. Okay. 20. Yeah, they're... Uh... Pretty much looking through carts as if they're trying to see if anybody's trying to sneak in. You don't see these particular guards trying to. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Extort money from those who are trying to get in. Looks like they're just mm -hmm. trying to do their due diligence as guards. Yeah, it looks like this place will be safer than any to get in. Just doing their job. Even so, here. I don't want to get my rifle confiscated in one. Uh, I think you're fine, Rock, but 
That's a good idea. I can just put my hood up and then they won't even know. They can ask you guys and uh, I will camouflage against a nearby wall. Just in case they want to mark. Hopefully none of them check. have witch sight. Yeah, I'm just more or less curious. Maybe we shouldn't try and sneak in if we can just walk in. Yeah. In case they want to keep a tally on who's supposed to be in and who's not. Well, I'm going to just mosey on up to the gate, see if I can get past it. Yeah, I've barely gotten past it to this town before. Okay. Well, there's a. Uh... Looks like a wagon loaded down with some sort of fabric in front of y'all. Okay. The guards walk up, start talking to the lady that's sitting up on the bench. Uh, they start poking around in the back of the uh, cart to see if there's anything in it. They slap the side of the cart, she rolls in. So now it's your turn. So who's, who's so that? Who's doing the talking? Oh, I was just going to wait till the guards. And... Who want? I think, uh... uh state your Brock. business. Uh, we're looking I'm for... I'm in halfling form. I'm in halfling form, by the way, just in case you're wondering. It's an odd-looking crew. What's your business? Uh, tavern to spend the night in. Maybe do a little shopping tomorrow morning. You have a bit. Uh, Joy, my internet connection is unstable. Yeah, you yeah. tweaked for a second there, but you're fine. I'm just trying to figure out why it's tweaking all of a sudden. I'm just here to stay for the night. Yeah, do some shopping tomorrow and then. Any business? Else is... Any business uh, beyond that? Not to my knowledge, no. You're not here to start trouble, are you? No. Here. But if we can't get all the provisions we need first day, we might have to stay another night. All right. Well, give me a whoever's doing the major talking, a persuasion check. Uh, persuasion. Hey. <laughs> Alrighty then. Where are you staying? Uh, what was it? Do I remember what the bar's name was that I was in earlier? The tavern? Trying to remember the name of the place you were at before you left? Yeah. Give Our very a, first adventure. Give me a history check and we'll see if you remember. A year and a half. But Is this where we time. left from originally? Yep. Sergeant Rock and Brother May I did with another group of people. You met them on the island. Oh, that's right. Okay, I was like, I don't remember leaving from here. All right, so the name of the place you were staying at was the Harlequin's Paleo. All right, I'll relay that to the guard. Uh, we'll see if Harlequin's Paleo has some rooms. That's where I stayed the last time I was here. Although, well, if you've been there, think... if you've been there that... before, you know how to get there now. Yep. Yes, we do. Keep your nose out of trouble. Alright. Hey, man. Do they, they, they have a sturdy roof for us to uh, hook up on? Say what? Do they have a sturdy roof that uh, me and uh, Fred can lay on? You I can sure try. Don't. I would not recommend it, though. <sighs> I don't know. I never laid on the roof. The stools are pretty sturdy. Well, I think I need to find a place for me and Fred to take up for the night, because why don't you just, uh, you know, I guess banish him? It's not really the right word, but it's close him enough. And, and then, you, yeah, dismiss him and summon him to, when you need him again. Because well, who knows when I'm going to need him again? I might need him in the middle of the night, you know. Okay. In a big city full of guards? Your call. <laughs> Besides, Completely he's, up to you. he's very soft to sleep again. Okay. I'm sure they probably have stables somewhere. If you don't want to stay in the inn. Alright, so I'm going to ask about if they have stables in town. 
Alright, so you're trying to ask the guards? Yeah. Alright, they've already waved you through, so you're going to try to get their attention again. So give me a persuasion to see if they can tell you something. Or see if they will tell you something, let's just put it that way. <laughs> Not. What was the name of the pub? Harlequin's Flail. Now, you go to get his attention, he's like, I already let you through the gates. What more do you want? Just wanted to know if you had any stables anywhere. Do I look like an information broker? No, you don't. Or a visiting center? Do you have a visiting center? The tavern will go. Ask somebody else. He turns back okay. to start questioning some other people coming in. There might be stables associated with the uh, Harlequin's flail. That would be fairly typical. All right. Well, I'll go with you guys until we can figure something out. All right. So, marching order? Rock, of course, the first B in the trail position. Yeah. I'll take lead since I'm familiar with this town to a certain extent. I'll stick around towards the middle. I'll be after Brother May, I guess, because I don't know where I'm going. The Rock will invite the kid to stay back with him, but it's up to the kid where he will. Oh, wait, we don't have the kid anymore. Nope. No, we no don't kid. <laughs> so Rock turns around talking to the kid that's not there. Unless you're yeah. talking about dogs. They're having to deal with that crazy kid. And also, I got kind of accustomed to having to catch Revivify. Okay, so, <laughs> um, right. Can you see my pointer? Um, I'm zoomed. <laughs> Super fine. Cool. All right, yep. So just kind of give me a marching order right here. Are we headed northbound? Uh, I am on the wrong. Let's get there. There we go. Yeah, for some reason, we're all the opposite direction, so. You can put yourself northbound. It's just a representation of a street, ha uh, buildings on either side. Now, do you remember exactly where the Harlequin's flail was located there, Brother May I? Uh, sure. Hold on. I have complete faith in him. But I still cast guidance on him. I was going to say, I... I'm from the woods. Big cities aren't my shtick. Uh, I assume you need me to do a survival check. Sure. Sounds good to me. Guidance. All right. All right. Yeah, you don't, for a moment, you're standing in the middle of the street and like pointing and doing that whole thinking thing. And then you, you realize, oh, yeah, that's right. It's this way. And you make your way there. Now, let's see. It apparently it appears to be a grand half timbered building with a. As you enter inside, it's got a tiled mosaic floor. Let's see what else is going on. You don't need to know any more of that. You see a very familiar elven face on the other side of the bar. Uh, female elf, do you remember her name as Al Albreus? And the two who will know those names is May I and Rock, because you've both been here before. Sergeant yeah. Rock, you remember you had a meeting upstairs in this building at one point in time. With I did. I will uh, sign her up, having uh, been reminded of her name, and uh, just say, hey, uh, Obrius, uh, we, we could use a couple of rooms for the night, me and my squad here. <clears throat> and uh, in addition, we have a friend outside who has a, a large horse, hoping that you have some stables associated with the tavern. Yes, we've got stables around back. And how many rooms do you need? Uh, how many we can get? I've not <laughs> gone all night. How many rooms do you need? How many do you have available? 
Oh, I'm not renting all my rooms to you. Four. They need four rooms. Yeah. Well, if we want individual rooms, I'm willing to share with the bear. We don't right. allow animals inside the building. What do you mean, share with a bear? Yeah, it's a nickname. Yeah, we got a pal we call a bear. So how many right. rooms do you need? Two? We'll take four? two. We'll take two. Two. It'll be three gold per room. All right, I'll give her six gold. And that'll include a breakfast, like you did last time. Okay. You, s I remember you, don't I? A little gaunter than the last time I saw you. Yeah, it's been a long trip. You might be a little less thirsty too. Yeah. Do you want the usual? Uh, no. Uh, do you happen to have any tea? <laughs> tea. Yeah, must have been a long trip, because you didn't drink no tea last time you was here. Yeah, I kind of lost some taste in some things. For as much ale as you put down, I could see you losing a lot of taste. <clears throat> uh, is the kitchen open right now? Sure. I'm guessing you're wanting some food. Yeah. Yeah, good berries only go so far. Well, we've got, uh, like I said, the cost of your rooms includes your breakfast. It doesn't include dinner and ale tonight. Yeah, that's fine. So uh, we have three specials. Do you care to hear what they are? Yes, please. Well, there's lamb cake with onion. Comes with a glass of wine. There's chicken pie with egg. Comes with a glass of brandy. And then there's pheasant soup with bread, and it comes with a tankard of beer. So either of those sound uh, to your liking. What else comes in the pheasant soup? Pheasant. Pheasant. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, it's pheasant soup with bread. Does what? it have like mushrooms, some onions in it? I didn't say pheasant and mushroom soup, now did I? Okay, just make sure there's no mushrooms. I may be a fun guy, but I don't like fungus. <clears throat> yeah. Right, right, Good chicken thing pie. you're not a bard. So what do you want? Do you want the pheasant soup? I'll take the pheasant soup. What do you guys want? Um, I'm fine. Raw meat? Mm, okay. Well, I can't give you raw meat. I'm not allowed to give out raw meat. You know, health regulations and all that. Uh, mostly raw meat? And we <laughs> lost Todd. And he's back. <coughs> do you How want about you? the lamb yes. cake? Do you want the chicken pie? Or do you want the pheasant soup? Um, take the pheasant soup. I'll take the lamb. Just don't cook it too much. Five sills for you. Five silvers for you. What about the other two gent? Well, the other three gentlemen here. Yeah, Rock would like uh, some spam, 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 spam eggs and spam. Are there any Vikings in here? Just better. But before I order, I gotta check. Vikings. Does anybody else want anything? I'm fine. Chicken. Yeah, if there's Vikings, I'll switch to the chicken pie because I don't want to get them started. Can anybody translate that for me? <laughs> I cannot. I, I don't think any of us can. <laughs> okay, so that'll be five silvers for each of you. Uh, so that's what. I go ahead and give her the five silvers. Okay. And I'm I was assuming buy. you wanted tea, you said. Mm. We'll throw in a pitcher of ale, some glasses. So, so how much for the stable for the night? Stable, let's see. Are you staying in the stable or are you renting a room? 
Uh, I stay with my horse, so I'll be in the stable with him. Okay, mm three three gold. Okay. All right, then I'll go get your order made, and the last will be out with it in a moment. And yes, I'm not speaking with a proper, delicate accent. So, what are y'all doing? Uh, Rock wants to get a table by the window so we can look out and watch passers-by. All right. You find a table off in the window, so... Does it, is it a crowded night, or...? There's a few other patrons. I'm like just watching some usual activity outside in case somebody has noted our entry. I'm going to go outside and eat with bread. <laughs> I'm surprised you all are still hungry after the feast we had. Well, I'm oh, assuming I can... it took us a couple hours to walk into town. but I can always eat. It's an old traveler's trick. You never skip a meal. <laughs> all right, let's see. Did that work match up better? No, we all just disappeared from the room. Yep, go south of where you were at. Scroll, 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 scroll. A uh, pub. So, let's see. Mm -hmm. Here's what I see. All righty then. All right, so there's a layout. Put your people where you want to be. Um, let's see. All right, so we'll put the fellow here. It looks like we're not to scale. Uh, it's the chairs are a little about like, half size. Yeah, the chairs are a little big. Yeah, oversized. Uh, oversized, oversized. Let's well, down. maybe they are ogre size, or maybe they're like. We're talking size. about the chairs are always a little bit big. They accommodate all patrons. Yeah, it's the way it's set up. I mean, I can go that small. I guess it's close enough. No, it's not. Yeah, that is quite a lot. All right, go ahead and move you guys around. Oh, you mean Ducks isn't dancing on the table? Not yet. They haven't had enough drinks yet. I do. I don't have my bow string to play my harp. Well, we did get a new bow, so. <laughs> that none yes. of us can use. Just, just take the string off of the oath, though. It's fine. <laughs> it's an uh, oath instrument. Now. I actually can use the oath, though. Thank you very much. Yeah, you can. I love oh, yeah. being a barbarian. You get any weapon you want. It's only when I'm in bear form, though, because I'm a medium-sized creature. It's too big for me when I'm a halfling. Oh, there it is. That's what I was looking for. So why is gotta it? make sure whoever you shoot with it, you kill, because if not, then you got a huge drawback. <laughs> I'm surrounded by comedians. Alrighty then. So, let's see. I'm still having issues, because for some reason things ain't loading. Alright, so... There's a barkeep behind the, the bar there, so just imagine she's there because it's not loading for me to put her out. Yeah. And you guys choose a table. Does everybody go to the table or what? We have scattered to various tables. It uh, looks like me and Rock are at the same table. I don't know where everybody else went. Yeah, I think those are supposed to be stools for a bar. So. Oh. Yeah, it, it's the, the scaling is a oh. little off. The. Oh. With the whole way they put built their little scene here. Oh, okay. All right. Well, Rock is standing, looking out the window. May I can have the stool? I can move to this stool. <clears throat> that stool. 
Yeah, you said yeah. that still last time you were here. I do remember you said that. Yeah. All right, so uh, you're looking out the window. Give me perception. He's leaning. I got a 20 on the perception check. All right, and what's everybody else doing? Hanging out at the table. I'm sitting in the corner eating my food and observing the room. All right, so... Give me a perception on your end. I'm just passively perceiving the room, so at the 21. All right. So, uh, let's see. You see a male human dressed like a well-dressed engraver does. Fair skin. Fingers appear to be delicate and long. His head is shaved. Amber eyes darting around the room. Uh, actively observing. I want to approach the thing. He seems to be observing everything as well as you are. So looking at his fingers, does he have ink stains on his fingers? He does not. Hmm. Okay, I want to approach this man. Uh, okay, I'll let you approach that one before I tell you about any of the others. Uh, he's, he seems interesting. <laughs> but while I'm approaching him, why don't you tell me about the others? Sure, why not? There's a female halfling over near the fireplace. Stocky, darker-skinned woman wearing professional attire. Her hair seems to be cut to a buzz. Her fair skin shows little signs of her aristocratic breeding. Hmm. That's one. There's also a male halfling on the opposite side of the table talking to her. He looks like he's unhealthily muscled. Almost as if every single one of his veins is visible when he is not flexing. His shirt and pants tend to be short and undersized for him due to the difficulty of finding a good tailor. Uh, he has shaved, he has shaved his head bald, it appears, and he also looks got a dull look in his gray eyes. Hmm. And the last person is a male gnome, who's sitting opposite of that human you're walking towards. A uh, little stockier, darker-skinned man. He wears a, a worn and beaten armor. His hair, while still mostly blonde, has prominent streaks of gray in it. And he has a dull look in his brown eyes. And you're making your way to the human. This one is the engraver, right? Nope, up here. Oh, never mind then. That's the halfling, I'm guessing, then. Yeah, these are the halflings. Female is this one's the female, this one's the male, that's the gnome, and that's the human. Alright, um, that all good, sir. I noticed from your appearance that you seem to be in a, a delicate line of work. What's it to you? I'm um, actually, I'm looking for someone with. I guess your similar skills, but who does engravings on skin? I'm looking for a tattoo artist. You don't happen to know of one, do you? Do I look like I know a tattoo artist? I'm just trying to enjoy my dinner here. What do you want? I told you what I want, but I understand if you can't help me. Enjoy your dinner. Fucking hell, please. All right, I'll go and talk to the well muscled. Starts patting himself down people. as you walk away. I give him a Hawaiian hello on my way back on my way out. Hola. A Hawaiian oh. hello. Oh. But then I'll go over and I'll um, I'll dress the halflings at the table. Okay. And I'll speak to them in halfling and I'll give them the traditional halfling greeting. All right. Who are you talking to first? Both at the same time. Yeah, well, they both appear, um, you know, when you walk up to the table, you usually focus on at least one of the people at the table. So which one are you focusing on? I'll focus on the woman, since it's polite and halfling cultures to address women first. All right. Well, they both have, uh, you know, smiles on their face, energetic, you know, enjoying their meal, drinking their ale. Ah. What you want? Ah. I'm just coming to say hello. Well, hello. Notice, notice you guys are over here by yourselves. It's been a long time since I've chanced upon any anyone else that is of my 
temperaments and and joviality. Jeez, a lot of big words to say. You ain't never seen another halfling in a while. Oh, yeah, not. yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> so you're just gonna stand there. You gonna stand as male? What did you say? You just gonna stand there? You gonna sit down and have some ale? Ah, I'll sit. And I'll pull a table up, or a chair up, and sit here at the end of the table so I can see them both instead of sitting on one side or the other. So, my name's <laughs> Nikki, and my friend. Are you from here? Well, we came in on a boat. And my friend here is Ozyman. 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 Good yes. to meet you. Hi, right, good to meet you too. You... So what brings you to what brings you to this part? Well, I mean, a boat. They told you. <laughs> a business brings you to this part. Well, if you have to know, I'm looking for somebody. I. And my friend here, he figured he'd join me to help me out. Mm. Be searching for. You see. Please don't tell me so long, last die. What? what? All right. So here's the deal. I'm looking for. Let's see. Where were there? One, two, three. Was it just three of you that left initially? There were three. Or was there four? No, I think the I think the dragon guy wasn't was with them initially, right? No, I was referring to Kurt. He knows what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Jacks, uh, yeah. Kiki, um, Jacks, Kiki, Roranok, and Aurora. Aurora. Four. Aurora. So it's only Aurora. Which was because Roranok died. Yeah. So okay. and came after. Uh, well, there's so um, three. There's this elf. Um, this little mouse folk, I think is what they call him. Yeah, he's a little shorter than I am, which is unusual. It really is. And then, let's see, what was Jax? Jax was not a Goliath. That was Roranok. He was an Azamar. Azamar. And, of course, there was the pretty boy, who... All of them disappeared a while back, and we've been paid to try to hunt him down. So, do I recognize the description of the pretty boy? Nope. You don't recognize any of the descriptions because you guys have not met any of them. Okay. All right. Huh? So you guys are bounty hunters then? I am. Keepers. And um, Ozzy's like, I like animals more than people, but yeah, I figured I'd help her out. Oh, okay. So, you, so you're a hunter then? What kind of animals do you generally hunt? Hunt? Oh, heaven forbid. No, I don't hunt animals. I train them. This is the muscle-bound guy? Yeah. <laughs> ah. So what? What do you? Where? What do you train them for then? I've Are you in the circus? I've trained them for entertainment. Matter of fact, I believe that you use some of my tigers. I trained in the Coliseum from time to time. Just you know, whoever pays the money. Ah, you don't happen to have any trained um, mounts, do you? Any wolves or tiger mounts? Mounts? No, I don't. I don't usually train mounts. Oh, could you? Huh? If I could, if you were commissioned, could you train one? You probably could. It's usually more attack animals. Or there was this guy that had me train a monkey once to to pickpocket. That was fun, but yeah. <laughs> well, you see, I'm looking for a big cat that I can use as a mount that also can go really fast, climb, and attack. So you just have to give him the extra mount training on top of the attack training. Maybe one of those tigers like, so, yeah, the Coliseum, so, maybe. Yeah, but you, you know, to do that, you'd have to get me a baby. And I'd have to train it and raise it that way. To get it to, uh, you know, be able to, you know, be a mount and also be an attack cat at the same time. I think I've trained maybe one or two battle cats in my days, but not many. It, it's, long, it's a long process. Well, let's see. A cat takes what three, four years to grow? Mostly, yeah. And then you know, as they're growing, you teach them the whole attack thing. And then when they get to full grown, that's when you have to start teaching them 
how to be a proper mount. So you're looking at least, let's say, five years worth of training. Well, let's see. But you said you trained the cat at the couple team, right? Yeah, but you're not riding any of those. <laughs> well, what if I procured one of them and you could teach it to be a mount? Because you said once it's full grown, that's when you train it to be a mount, right? The only problem with that, those are trained to eat anything that breathes. Well, I could be they trained out of them, I didn't eat you, did you? They were very specific on that, and yeah, they if it breathes, it, it's food. So, but they didn't eat you, did they? <laughs> Came close once or twice, but that's why I keep a cage between me and them. Ah, I see. So Rock so calls from not... the room. I asked him if they got any mules. He he doesn't speak halfling, do you, Rock? <laughs> no. Yeah, you're hearing this see. halfling gibberish going on. <laughs> as as another player well. of mine says, we're speaking recipe, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do. Um, I, I I haven't heard of any of the people that you're looking for. I might. I don't know. I could ask around. If you give me better descriptions, or if you could maybe draw them for me, I might be able to help you find them. Oh, you know what? Here, tell you what. Think of them. Do you have Have you seen them before? I'm just going by the description I was given. Ah, so you haven't ever actually so seen them. So she will pull out what looks like one of her posters, and you'll see. Um, you'll see what looks like a, a mouse. Have you ever seen a? You ever watched? I'm sure you've watched. You have children. The uh, Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe movies. The yeah. Prince Prince Caspian. Yeah, the mouse guys. The little mouse guys. So, so it's like, it's like the Nim people? Mm-hmm. That's what the mouse guy looks like. And, of course, the other one, it looks like an ass. Uh, yours was a, a fallen, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. So a fallen Asimar, and the other one just looks like a very gaunt-looking elf. Um, you know, high, uh, high cheekbones, very gaunt cheeks. Um, not any color in these, so you can't get much, you know, long hair. <laughs> That's pretty okay. much all you're gathering from it. All right, so I'll commit the pictures to memory. The names are that are on the posters are, are Kiki, Jax, which was the ASMR, and Aurora, which was the elf. Um, could I use my skill as a forger to commit these to memory, or do you want me to not roll a skill? How do you want me to do it? If you're trying to commit them to memory, you can just use the history. Well, I'm better at forgery than history. So you want to take a moment <laughs> to draw these out yourself? Sure, I'll just copy them down. I'll pull out some paper and a pens and copy the pictures. Are you trying to take my bath to you, are you? Ah, no. Just looking to help. You know us. Halflings were helpful, right? Okay. You can copy them. Why isn't it rolling? You just be sure you look me up when you find them. Nikki Whispermouse, at your service. It's not rolling for me. Oh, there it is. It's asking for normal. There we go. Yeah. All right. So you have a copy of these wanted posters. So add that to Perfect. your um list. Okay. In typical halfling style, they start digging into their food. Any more conversation you want to have with them? I'm. I'll ask them where they're from. So are you guys from originally anyway? No, you're obviously not from around here. And do you know each other from origin or did you meet up here? Oh no, we met we met before. But um she doesn't actually give you a name of where she's from. Hold on, let me verify. Uh, yeah, um, they actually says they are from a, not a small fishing village, but they came from actually further north from the last bounty they were at, and they've been, they've been traveling together for at least a year. They started out, okay. he, they don't get too, uh, too informative on you. They don't tell you everything about their life story. They said they've been traveling for about a year or so, and the last place they came from was a port for the, further north of where you're currently at. Okay. So how, 
long have you been in the city looking for these people? Uh, well, we've been here for, I don't know. Uh, apparently they sent their own crew searching for them and found nothing, so they hired us about a week ago, I'd say. Okay. Of course, well, they've been missing looking... a little over a month or so, so I'm just trying to catch any leads I can. Okay. Well, while you were looking around the city, did you happen to... I'm looking for a tattoo artist. There's supposed to be a tattoo artist of some renown in this area, in this town. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there, there's a tattoo artist in town. Well, this one, he's supposed to be able to imbue the ink with magical properties. I don't know about a him, but there's a she. Ah. You probably look. Apologize. No, 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 that's no problem. You know, the way things are, people tend to think, you know, it's always the guy that's making it, not the girl. And this is, uh... Uh, what was her name was? Not, not him. Nikki talking to you. Okay. So yeah, you want to go down to the hot groove, <laughs> and uh, you want to talk to Nora Littlefoot. She will set you up. Uh, now it's, I'm, I, I have to warn you. She's not cheap, but she does a pretty good job with her tattoos. Hi. Thank you very much. Thank you kindly for your help. Well, no problem. But remember, you see my quarry, you let me know. All right. Here. Um, where are you staying here, then? So if I do find them, I'll be able to come back and talk. How long we'll, will you be here? We'll be here for the night until uh, a few more leads to check on tomorrow, and then we'll probably chase those. But you can leave a message here, and we'll check on it. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you kindly for your time. Mm-hmm. I'll make my my departure. Come back over and sit with the surge. Okay. Uh, each one of those bounties are a thousand gold ahead. Uh, so when I get back over the table, I'll spread out the posters and start looking at the faces, seeing if I recognize any features in them. Okay. You can investigate. Investigate, I will. What are you doing there? And oh well. I'll, uh... I was uh, over talking to these halflings, and it appears that one of them is a bounty hunter. Oh. And she gave me these posters. Oh, she had some posters. And I made some copies. She's looking for these people. So I'll show them the surge. Yeah, and I would uh, look at look them over, and then I would have helped and guide you on that. And, uh, anything else? Oh. Did we lose him? Yeah, he froze up. Oh. But I still hear sound. Did you give guidance, you said? Go ahead and roll for the guidance on that. Yeah, I I, he hear must, he could have froze up. I think I'm hearing somebody else's noise, not his. Yeah. All right, well, once he gets back, uh, we'll figure that out. Um, there he is. Oh. There you are. That's fine. It about apparently, it's happening a lot lately. You know, um... Here especially. It's been on and off all week. Every now and then, my, my character's eyes just go blank, and he goes into his own head for a little bit, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. What were you saying? Uh, you still need your um, your guidance for your investigation, by the way. Yeah, yeah. That's a curious group of folk. And so I, when she described them, it seemed a little bit... And I didn't want to be rude. Yeah, no, hey, the little guy, there. you don't see them very often at all. When there's even a littler guy on the other side of the room. <laughs> yep. Internet. So much fun today. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> what's the wisdom save for? Uh, that was just me testing something out. Okay. Because I'm um, having issues to myself. I think we're all having issues. Yeah. Welcome back. Character. Hopefully this time it'll be better. Um, okay. Nice to see that we're giving, getting some more of the solicitations of buying, buying followers and primes and viewers. Oh, more of that. Yep. I mean, I, 
I'd like to have real viewers, not purchased ones. Um, anyway, with your investigation, you're looking over the paperwork, and you do note you got the pictures and somewhat of the description, but there is actually writing at the bottom. Um, they all say pretty much the same thing. Last seen, Coliseum, uh, um, Coliseum cages, uh, escaped in the middle of the night, um, owner would like them back. Uh, makes sense. They were both had ties to the Coliseum. I think I want to get myself a cat. Oh, really? Well, <laughs> Sorry. There's all what types of different manners of. Oh, what type are you thinking? There's all different of them. Well, you see, I heard tell that there's a couple of cats that work at the Coliseum that have been trained to kill, and I don't much like hearing that animals are being used that way. But, and it appears, and so I, I show Serge at the bottom the that they're escaped slaves, I guess, from the Coliseum. Yeah, I was thinking about helping him out, but at the same time, not go out of my way. Yeah, I mean, if we weren't across him, why not? I mean, yeah, maybe. at the same time, I mean, I know I wouldn't want to be in those cages. So yeah, I'll exactly. make their way out. That's fine. Yep. Right. So, so, yeah. What's uh? Everybody else doing? Um, quick question. Go ahead. Are Rock, all... Go What's ahead, up? Rock. Rock's watching out the window until his chicken pie comes. Okay, it's yeah, it, it doesn't take long for it to show up. What are you doing, Serge? Uh, he's talking about cats. Are all... Is it just, you know, some of the basic animals in the Monster Manual, or all of them, like all the books, going to be available to try and find? Uh, the cats he's referring to, of course, are just the tigers in the Coliseum. Yeah, like if I were to, if I were to able to find one to summon, to see that would be able to be found. The... Mm, I don't know. Uh, whatever cat you think you can summon, I suppose. So, that's it for on that. Yep, is there an internet broken? <laughs> poor, poor guy. Oh, and so is mine. Saying I'm unstable now, too. Yeah, mine kept saying it a minute ago. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And apparently roll 20 is going down. So. Oh, fun. Perfect. Wait, who said that? I was going to say, I didn't even see that last comment you mentioned about uh, internet down. Yeah. Uh, roll 20 just tweeted out they're currently investigating an issue that's causing users to unable access roll 20. Huh. I wonder. Random roll. Mine went through. Yeah. Okay. So far, so. Yeah. Maybe it's kicking certain people off or something. I don't know. Certain servers. Oh yeah, nice. Oh yeah. Why not? Let's just. <laughs> you know, throw them all tough cocktail. Yeah. Why not? I'm gonna test. I'm gonna test with fire. <laughs> why do we gotta bring up fire? Yeah. I mean. <laughs> fuck. Boom. All, all over the place. <clears throat> Okay, so that's radiant. You're fine. <laughs> All right, so uh, may I? What are you doing? I'm going to send a message to Serena. Uh, hey, Serena, just to let you know. Ow. Uh, following up some leads how are the kids and how is the town sweet the sending yep <laughs> what is that? that's about the Who's ship there? too yeah don't forget about the ship somebody there <sighs> may I she didn't work she didn't recognize the voice. Of course to be a You're going to make me use up all my third level spells, <laughs> ain't you? I mean, it's... I'll 
reply back. Well, you've never like, you've never done a sending to this woman before, so I mean, what kind of expect what do you expect her to do? It is I. It is I. I. I was checking in on the kids and you, plus how the town is doing. Oh, this is magic. I am fine, and so are the children. Um, all's quiet, I think. Where are you? <laughs> Out. I'm just north of uh, you in Barrymore. Don't you uh, Barrymore. Say north of there. Checking on leads with the Lich. Be home in a week or so. Left you some money in the dresser. By the I don't 12, know if that was. Huh? By the twelve, and you know that is a reference towards uh, the deities or pantheon. You've only been gone a few days, and you're in Barrymore. Be safe. And uh, she re she finishes off with the, "I love you, darling." Oh. <clears throat> and I told her we were in South Barrymore. Maybe uh, it's closer. South <laughs> Barrymore, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> a few steps. <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh and you know why don't we take a break a little bit early tonight so that hopefully some of these uh connections and issues can uh resolve resolve mm -hmm. so we're going to take about a five ten minute break you guys need to use bathroom get drinks and eat something uh i know it's a little early uh for our viewers but we'll be back in just a few moments
<laughs> just as I click the button. Um, All right, now. No, I don't care. All right, we're back. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, looks like our technical issues may be straightened out. We will have to wait and see. All right, so <laughs> crossing them fingers. So we were. Uh, what were you doing, brother? May I? You were sending a uh, message. Yes, to Serena, and I'll send one more. Let's just use all my top level spells. Why not? All right. Uh, to the quartermaster, see if he's seen or heard anything more from the ship they sent out to pick up the rest of the folks from the island. Go ahead. Oh. Hey, it's Brother May I. Just want to check in to see if the second ship has arrived. Uh, Brother May I, yes. Uh, no, the other ship has not arrived yet. But then again, we don't have a caster on that ship like you. And Nobody I, has a caster like me. Is that how many? How many words is that? I mean, not twenty-five. I think it was under. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's me, not them. I'm sure nothing's wrong. They should be back soon. Okay. That's all I got going on. Um. One of these days, I'm going to make you do a sending. And just as you get to the last one you can cast, I'm going to make some sort of comment at the very end. Oh, yeah. And, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to ask Ducks, have you ever thought about, about jabbing in his mind when he's talking like that? Trying to talk to someone else? The other uh, side of the room, just I've thought about it a couple times, but I know that, that he gets he gets frustrated as it is. I can only imagine that how much, frust how much more frustrating it would be if I took some of his time. Yeah, I guess. I'm not so one of those that likes to teach people fire just to see how they how they handle it. Some handle it great. <laughs> I mean, he's doing just fine. He only died twice. <laughs> twice. But he was in good company, so he's fine. I gave him a rare opportunity, you did. Everybody got jokes about fire. <laughs> fire's cool. Yeah, yeah, fire's cool. <laughs> so you're looking for a mount? What's that for? Uh, I just thought it'd be fun to have a, a cat I could ride. But You know, you're going to be faster than almost all of them, right? I said it would be cool. I didn't say it'd be practical. <laughs> I mean, you have to slow it down because of us anyway, but... but... Usually. But at the same no, time, I if I had a cat, I could, I could sit on it. And as we're going, I could just meditate while we go. Yeah, true. true. And because uh, I have a spell I could cast and bring forth a, a few that I have in my mind. And you could look or at the, them. Huh? You could just wild shape into a cat. Or eh. summon four at a time. <laughs> I can wild shape twice or just summon four. How long do they last if you summon them? Uh, I think it lasts about an hour. If I use uh, that spell, let me double check. It's an hour or a minute. It's an I hour. I don't want you to have to waste it. It's nighttime. It's getting towards... Uh... Well, I think he's talking about having a mount full time. Yeah, I know, but I'm just bringing up the idea of him being able to see which one piques his interest oh, yeah. the most. He's trying to you read know, it up on the website so he can see which one he likes. <laughs> oh, well, I have four. <laughs> well, question. If you see a cat, could you summon a cat that looks just like it? Um, I could try, yeah. I mean, I'm just summoning these, and they're just actual fake creatures that take the form of I'm going to I'm going to um, link to Serge's mind to describe. So say that if we were to uh, 
summon a cat and free the cat to the Coliseum, but summon cats to be in their place in the cages so that we could get the cats out of this inhumane treatment. We could try and buy them, and I mean, me and you are Gotta be fencing to enough with animals. That's what I mean. We could talk to them, we could convince them that they should come out with us and that they shouldn't kill us. Get them out, get them out of the city, and then in an hour or so, your cats would disappear and they would have no idea what happened. But how them out of the city? Oh, Shadow Step. Just Can't you just Can't take yourself? Take anything else with you, just yourself. Oh, I, it can survive for 10 minutes in a bag, right? I don't think they'll fit in a bag. No. <laughs> and trying to... <laughs> we don't have a bag of carriage. I need a, I need a dimensional hole. <laughs> On I mean, we could try and find portable. a portable hole. We could try and find one of those. But still, those are only so big as well. That would be the best. Yeah. <laughs> Just you know, going to an arena, being a oh, what are what are they in Spain with the bowls where they have the tarp? Uh, uh, conquistador or not a conquistador? Yeah. Uh, matador. Yeah. Matador. Yeah, you just you have a red portable hole instead. <laughs> Ole, gone. <laughs> What just happened? Where did it go? <laughs> uh, I just, and still mentally, I think that there's going to be some point where we're going to have to do something about this Coliseum. Well, yeah, we can try, or we can just be on our way. That's completely up to what the rest of the group wants to do. Right. And uh, I don't know if there's a good play to this, we're thinking. I mean, depending on how big the rooms are, I could cast them and fill it with these creatures that you're looking for. Or if you're just wanting to find one of them instead. Uh, it's in the, next, it's, it's the plans in the budding stages. We can talk about it later if it comes up. No, that's your call. I still need to find it. The tattoo artist, her name's uh, Nora Littlefoot. You've oh, been really? in the city before, haven't you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> this is the second biggest city I've been to. Uh, okay. And Rock and May I aren't anywhere near us, are they? On the other side of the tavern. Okay. <clears throat> Rock seems hey, to be Hey, Rock. Why don't you come join us? I haven't seen anything of notable outside. Like in particular, I've got witch sight going, and it'll reach thirty feet outside the window. Have there been anything passing by the the window that changed looks when they got within thirty feet? Not that you've noticed. <laughs> now, I will say there is something missing on this uh, particular map that you guys, the other two players, know is actually supposed to be here. There's stairs that lead up. We'll say from over in this corner that lead upstairs. Okay. So you know there is a second level to this uh, building. Yep. So what rooms do we got? <laughs> okay, I guess that was a question towards me. Uh, uh, yeah. Right, well, towards you or whoever, because well, so we got two rooms. Yeah, there's about uh, say six rooms upstairs, and you got two of them. One on the end of the hallway, and one on this side of the hallway. So let's see the best way to put that. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. What was that? Okay. Could have been furniture squeaking on concrete if that was May I. No, I might not be able to do anything because, yeah, I'm still getting loading, loading set uh. from the other two assets. So um, roll 20 uh. might not even work for me. Mm, okay. Mm. Let's check. Nope, tavern came up. But yeah, ducks. There are some fairly interesting creatures out there. If you're wanting a mount that's not just a, one of the tigers from the arena. You're muted. I can keep the options open. Yeah, that's fine. 
Uh, Rock's kind of interested in joining you when you go see that special tattoo artist. He has a tattoo of his own in him. Huh. Sounds good. You've, you've been here before, haven't you, Rock? I've been to this town, yeah. Might be worth going oh. and seeing. Have you ever heard of the, the hot groove? Sounds like a cape fire. Such no. a wonderful name, though. It's just like, what are you expecting? The hot groove. I don't think right. that space was here when I was here before. Never heard of it. You weren't looking for one, so no, you Amazing. wouldn't heard of it. Yeah. Big neon sign outside. <laughs> All right. That's well, odd. <laughs> we can look for it tomorrow. All right. So there's your rooms. All right, I'm not seeing the map if you loaded one. Uh, there's down below the, down here. Down below. Yeah, I'm gonna your... refresh my screen real quick. Yeah, right yeah it right just right popped up on mine. Straight below your character. Yep, that's just upstairs. So we have one on the end and then one at the side of the hallway. You have this one and this one. Actually, no, that's set up. Probably get you. No, I'll just leave it like that for now. Can you send those maps to the map field because it's overlapping our characters? Uh, is it? Huh? Okay, so yeah, if we put our just in there, we go. Yeah, I'll take care of that. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't put myself there. I was just like, wait, what? There you go. Thank you. I wasn't even thinking about that. Yeah, so should we bunk up for the night and hit the road tomorrow? Since I guess they're serving breakfast and whatnot. Mm, I... It's a long day. No. There's a few things we can do in town. Be interesting to explore it a little as well. Okay. Those are the two rooms you said we had, right? The one I'm in and the one third. Because I saw an arrow mm -hmm. at this one. So opposite corners. Perfect. Yeah, the, my other icon out there got sent to the back, by the way. It's in the grass. <laughs> what was your other icon? That's out there just to the right of the rooms. Oh, Outside okay. building. He, he, he's on the map stage. Yep. <clears throat> it's redundant. There you go. It's gone. Now there is less redundancy. Now I take me bed down for the night. I mean, uh, how's everyone thinking about that? Long rest here. Pretty good to me. Okay, so you guys take you make your way upstairs after eating your meal and drinking your drink, mm -hmm. and you're calling it a night. Uh, so corporal punishment. You and Fred are in the stables. No, we're still hanging out in front of the building. Uh, we're not quite tired yet, but we will be soon. Okay, so I don't what... I don't know where the stables are going to be. So I it's, gonna be, it's around back behind the building. Okay, but like um, where the deer heads are. Yeah, behind them or whatever they are. <laughs> well, I look like deer heads. So what were you doing out front the entire time while they were inside eating their meal and such? Well, after I got done eating, we were just kind of watching the people go by and seeing what's going on. Okay. You get a couple looks and stares your direction as you know, this late at night, you do get a few drunkards that come by, and it's not real populated on the streets, but you get some stares. I mean, I mean, it's a unicorn and a friggin' tiefling in the middle of the street sitting there <laughs> in front of a tavern. Yeah, well, as long as they don't bother me, I ain't gonna bother them. Yeah, it's more, you know, just more of a look in your direction, catching somebody's eyes kind of deal. 
I'll even wave at them. They kind of wave at you and move on? Okay. All right, so uh, other than that, what else is everybody else doing? Brock's going to put his hood up. He's just going to kind of wander around the city. Oh, so this is the next day? You guys... Nobody's keeping watch tonight? I was going to stay up for a little while. Uh, I assume Rock the door's <laughs> lock, right? They gave us the key. Since Rock doesn't have to sleep, he'll stay up all night. He'll kind of uh, wander the neighborhood, though. Light duty style. You're... wandering the streets at night? I'm invisible. I got my hood up. Okay. Well, I mean, what are you looking for? Not actually looking for anything, but if I see something, then I will uh, be able to bring it to the attention of the others. All right. It's going to be a perception. He's looking for the hot groove. <laughs> Anything notable, I might be seeing it. Oh, we're rescaling it. Yeah, I have someone in my family that went to Denver once and they went to a bar and then bar hopped to another bar called the Blue Oyster. Mm -hmm. They didn't stay there long. Anybody who's seen Police Academy knows what that's all about. He, he turned around and went back to the other bar. All right. So. Oh, I screwed that up. Whatever. Um, so with your perception, you do come across what looks like a... Uh, if you're looking for the hot groove? Oh, yeah, I would keep my eye out for that. All right. Well, you find a bunch of places as you're walking town at night. You find a place called the Unicorn's Gem. Um, you find another place called Vast Observer. Uh, located in a small alleys, um, the Unicorn's Gem is up in the Temple Ward area. You find um, what you can only describe as a general store, possibly, called Eglin's Wheel, located in the Arcane Quarter. How much walking around you want to look and do? <clears throat> um, he's not going to go more than, than three or four blocks from the inn. He doesn't want to get lost. Oh, about three or four blocks. So no, you yep. do not find um, the hot groove. Aha! Uh -huh. He uh, also keeps his eye out for any uh, potential uh, red lanterns that may be uh, put out. Mm hmm. Well, we're not too from such a district. You don't find any Red Lantern districts. Oh. But you've been here before, and you know that there is a place that you can go to that may have that. Not a <clears throat> district, but an actual building of its own. Uh, well, he's a, a proper soldier. He'll go out and seek female companionship. Okay. So, for those who are out there, just so you'll know, no, I did not come up with a brothel. So now I have to do that. <laughs> but that's not the unicorn's gem. That could just you know be there. That could be it. We'll just go ahead and use that. <laughs> All right. Does Jenny work at the brothel? <laughs> it's the unicorn's gem. Located just outside the Temple Ward. Um, it's adjacent to a very large house. Let's see. The place is a plaster and wood frame single story building with a white shingled roof and a small, looks like a vegetable garden around the side. Um, looks like a suit of armor that's uh, sitting up to one side of the door and of course once you enter the place 
um, there's these strings of beads that hang in the door frames and they block view from what's on the other side of the door <clears throat> wow. um, a rather curvy woman dressed in red uh, very elegant dress hair if it was let down you, you're sure it would be extremely long but it's all done up in uh, a bun in the back of her head um, just you know flowers in it she looks all nice and painted up human evening evening I'm guessing you're looking for company for the night <clears throat> it's true it's been a while been through some harrowing experiences use some relaxation well um, as they say in the tavern, what's your poison? Uh, what well, in the tavern, prefer? they'd have a menu. Just... <laughs> well, yes, they, they have do. a menu? <laughs> <laughs> You're wanting to know if we have a menu. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. If you've got something printed or, you know, just give me some ideas. <laughs> Male or female? Oh, definitely female. All right. Um, do you prefer human, elf, dwarf, halfling, gnome, or orc? Maybe even half orc. Or do you want something what? even more extravagant? Dwarves are pretty. I don't know, not dwarves, elves. Elves are pretty. <laughs> yeah. well, what, dwarves can't be pretty? <laughs> no. No. But they're the right height. So do you prefer. <laughs> Wow. I have many high elves. <laughs> do you prefer wood elves, or do you prefer the exotic dark elves, or do you prefer high elves? Uh, yeah, I don't want one made out of wood. I'll go with the high elf. You do realize a wood elf is not actually made out of wood, right? Yeah, they're probably hippies. Whatever that is. Hi. <laughs> All right, so let's see. I would think the high elves would be hippies. Yeah, it might not be uh, quite on my way. Hmm. Let's say, would you have hippies? High elves. <sighs> <laughs> But we have Drusia Lee. I'm sure she can take care of all your needs for the evening. And um, a rather scantily clad elven woman, about, uh, what were they, about 5'4". Elves aren't all that tall. Um, she's got long golden hair and pale skin, green eyes. She's got several different earrings in her ears all the way up to the point. <clears throat> mm. What's the... What were we rolling for? <laughs> oh, it is an old tradition that you just roll 2d6, you roll reaction to see what you think. And if you roll really high, you're like, wow, that's great. And if you roll low, you're like, oh, I like that much. And, uh, so... So she... Oh, okay. Okay. So you're kind of but, average. <laughs> yeah, not particularly excited about this one. And says, uh, well, "Why don't I go ahead and uh, see if I like that that wood elf any better?" I, I imagine the high elf seems a little sneaky. Yeah, no, I want her. Let me see her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never. She storms off back is back behind the curtain, and of course a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe elves aren't really what Brock is after. <laughs> well, out comes a brown haired, um, kind of tan skinned elf. And um, she has uh, golden eyes. And she's dressed in, uh, let's see, kind of a short, uh, almost like a nature made, like, almost looks like it's made out of leaves and such skirt. And not much of a top. Walks out barefoot. 
just don't seem natural. Maybe I should be uh, looking at just a regular human woman like myself. Or do you got a half elf? Maybe something a little more moderate so that it doesn't look so extreme. Hmm, you are a very picky individual, good sir. Well, I didn't know I'd be this picky when I got here. Oh, no? <laughs> <laughs> That's what the dice say. <laughs> Alright, so are you trying for a human now? <laughs> a half elf. Oh, half elf. Yeah, it's doing a little exotic, but not that exotic. Alrighty then. Maybe half orcs your flavor. So this one so. is kind of sto uh, stocky, darker skinned woman. She, uh, no, she's not wearing that. Uh, her hair, while still mostly blonde, has uh, a few small streaks of gray in it. To, uh, she has a brown eyes. Her name is Siliqui. All right, well, I got above a seven. Rock, I'll go for this one. Just slowly, tick, tick, tick. All righty. Go for a change lane. It can be whatever you want. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Rock will have to beep up his game later. There's just one problem with that. He'd only see the change lane. <laughs> He'd only see the change lane. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, um, now, my girls aren't free. Mind you. Oh, of course. You must yeah. pay for the time. Mm, I have some points. Yeah. Well, Siliqui here is, uh, how much time are you wishing to spend with her? An hour? Fine. That'll be a hundred gold per hour. hundred gold. All right. Right? Yeah, wow, we have a lot of money. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I would, I'd really look about 5,000 gold pieces here. So, yeah, I don't have any problems screwing out 100. All right, so she escorts you up to a room. Mm, not much role play when we go into this, but. Uh, I don't think oh, we need come to. On. Oh, no, come why on. Why not? <laughs> so. <laughs> What we're going to do <laughs> is she will ask you what your preference is, and, and then, come up then you will roll a performance check for me. Wow, we guidance. <laughs> Nate, you can't. He's not there, but he could guide himself. I'm not I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> he's got his own guidance. He'll get some. Uh, exactly. Some... That. Oh, hold on. That's what I'm saying. All right, you buddy. Know, you can do this, oh, buddy. Should... You can do this. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to psych himself up. Ah. We'll say performance is a what? Charisma. All right, so I need to check. 17 for you. Um, you you think wow. you've done a, a fine, outstanding job. Yes, Brock has a great talent. You do have a great time because I rolled a 19 on her check. Uh -huh. And there's got to be a charisma bonus. So, yeah, that's just on the dot. <laughs> so, yes, you have an ex ex an outstanding wow. evening with... Uh, Rock will be a little weary. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the first hour. Well, Bob Rock's not going to push it. He's got to... <laughs> Anyway, he's going to have a dumb grin on himself all day tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Ta-ta for now. I'll be back. <laughs> promises, promises. <clears throat> so what was her 2d6 roll of uh, rocks? Oh, impression? yeah, I don't know. Let's check that. Oh, she might actually like him. <laughs> or Two. just go, you, I'll be back. No, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> She <clears throat> a little, yeah, you know, whatever. I rolled a six and a one. <laughs> so she, she could take it or leave it. <laughs> All right. And then uh, Rock will continue. Uh, well, he'll just go back and kind of uh, stand outside the stables and uh, watch passers by from the other side for a bit. 
And you yeah, well, see Sergeant Watt Rock come walking up with a big old grin on his face. He's walking like he's walking on air. Uh, everything okay there? Everything is great. I haven't seen you in this good a mood in ever. Yeah, I don't think I've been in this good a mood since I got here. Nope. More than likely, this is your first time with uh, somebody from this timeline. <laughs> yep. Yeah. When, when he, well, last time he was in this town, he was poor. And busy doing odd jobs for somebody else. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> All right. So I assume there's nothing else that happens in the night. I uh, walk around the building a couple times, you know. See if I see anything unexpected with which site. Nope, you see nothing unexpected with your witch site. All right. So, I like this aspect of the moon thing. I'm, I'm gonna have to do that on my other warlocks. <laughs> Just gonna fuck around all day long. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the night goes by uneventful. Uh, it's kind of cool outside as you're walking around. Temperatures do kind of drop. A little bit of frost on the ground. Um, due to the fact you're sleeping so close to Fred, you're able to, you know, the body heat of the horse, the alicorn and yourself are able to keep from being too cold in the night. Sergeant Rock, you're... Are you dressed for the weather? Uh, yeah, he's got a uh, plate on you do notice exactly. you do notice the temperature does drop tremendously at night. Not enough to freeze you, but enough to cause you know frost on the ground and uh, enough to be oh, well, he, cool. Yeah, he's got uh, some uh, some quality know-how, and uh, he knows enough to drink warm beverages to help keep himself warm. And uh, <clears throat> he's got pressed digitation though. To you know, all he has to do is get a cup of water. He can. Use prestidation to warm it up, and another prestidation to make it taste like hot cocoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, the night goes by uneventful. The sun starts to come up. You guys sleeping in? Or are you getting up with the sun? Or how you doing it? He can even put marshmallows in his hot cocoa. Loose green stuff. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Me and Fred are up with the dawn pretty much. Um... We'll just kind of be hanging around the front of the inn again. Yeah, going to be up early. Yep. Get up, go downstairs, get our breakfast. Oh, oh you get downstairs. Rock guy suddenly waves away a, a minor illusion of uh, uh, what appears to have been maybe a, a half elven female. Hey, good morning, Rock. Hey, what's that on the oh. corner of your lip? Lump or something. Uh... Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> I'll just press to digitate that off. I don't think I can get the grin off, though. <laughs> Looks a little pussy. <laughs> oh, I might need to see a cleric after that? Is that what you're telling me? Uh-huh. Oh, luckily I have one right here. I don't know. Roll me constitutional saving throw. <laughs> Now one of my specialties. No meowing. All right, blew the roll. Yeah, you blew I need something. To... So yeah, you're just kind of having uh, this itch. I need to say, <laughs> yeah, a little burning <laughs> sensation when you urinate. The wages of sin. So what y'all doing? Uh, coming down, get our breakfast, and then I guess look for that tattoo place. Yep. All right, you're. Yeah, I'll ask the bar the bartender if he knows where the hot groove is. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the morning bartender is a rather gruff-looking dwarf. Uh, apparently, cleaning the same glass for the last hour. With a dirty rag. Yeah, with a dirty rag. Um, your breakfast was a couple eggs and a slab of meat, which you assume was ham, and a hot beverage. Um, 
Uh, he said it's a beverage made from dried beans. Uh, something somebody brought in one time. He can't remember what the name of it is. What well, was called cafe? Well, they, they, he wants to say it was cafe fe or something like that, but I'm not real certain. Sound like a stupid name to me anyway. So you're looking for the hot groove. Why? Thanks. You look to get some ink done. Hi. Hey, the hot groove. Is I mean, that stuff made from beans? Is it what we think it is? Is it coffee? Yeah, it's kind of a coffee. Strong. All right. Cafe fe. It's cafe right. fe. Well, this is called Joe. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, it does have a bit of a taste like coffee, but it's got uh, some weird aftertaste and it's a little strong. And it's thick. It's very thick. Yeah, it's not that good. It's uh, it's cowboy coffee. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you might want to cut this with chicory next time. Uh, All right. Now you're looking for the hot groove. Last guy to place down by the docks. Oh, okay. And so... It's in the middle oh. of the breakfast. I love the breakfast. Whatever that weird meat is, is awesome. It's spam. <laughs> <laughs> Fried spam. <laughs> uh... So, if you're um, going to get some ink done by her, you better have some coin on you. She's not cheap. How much? Well, it depends upon what you get done on you. Hmm. He pulls up his sleeve and shows you a tattoo he's got on his arm. Some looks like dwarven runes or whatever tattooed down the side of his arm. Now, mind you, this one here, it's not a special one. It's just more of an ink. Yeah. Oh, I just went blurry. There we go. A little bit. Um... I guess I stepped back. My camera needed to refocus. There's nothing special about it other than the fact it's, you know, the Dwarven runes, but that ran me about um, eh, about 500 gold just to do that. If you want something special, they come in different prices depending upon the size. Hmm. Sounds good. Let me make sure that I told what, you the right price. What groove? What, what's the name of the place? Hot Groove. Hot Groove. Better. I mean, for a halfling, she's definitely a looker. Of course, she's got all you know, lots of ink on her body as well. Uh, let's see. So yeah, I, I gave you the right price on the tattoo that I just mentioned. Five hundred bucks. Five hundred gold for the you know the fact it goes from elbow to shoulder. What a surprise for a special tattoo. Well, like I said, it depends upon what you're getting and how much you know, how much it takes to cover. Hmm. I mean, I've seen some lads go through there with a dropping a very pretty coins. You know, I think it was five hundred k. I don't know that much. Well, that was a rather large one. Um. Almost like a full body on the back kind of deal, but it had some special uh, met, uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> special wow. properties to it as well, lad. Ah, it wasn't just ink; it was just properties to it as well. Hmm. well sounds exactly what I'm looking for. Thank you very much for your time and no for breakfast. Well, you did pay for it. You plan on staying another night? Um, we'll be back. Yeah, I probably won't hurt. All the rooms for us. Do you wish to book your rooms now, or do you want to just run your chances when you return this evening to see if there's still rooms available? I'll go ahead and give them another, what was it, six, six. points? I'll, I'll gesture. It all depends upon whether or not you want the uh, stable room, too, I suppose. Yep. So... Brings it three each. Three each, so ten gold. Well, I'll ten gold. It's act nine, but that works. It's easier for me to do math. Hey, <laughs> thanks for the tip. All right, well, enjoy your day. See you around lunch if you find on coming back to eat. Be careful, there are some cutthroats out there, especially down by the docks. 
what lunch specials do you have? Let's see, what are my lunch specials? Uh, we have something for lunch called the Phoenix Sandwich. We also have a uh, Diary of Pig Casserole. And I believe today is the Phoenix Cake with Barley Biscuits. What's all in the Phoenix Sandwich? I don't think you want that. It burns you and then it burns you again. <laughs> burns on the way up, down, and then down again. <laughs> Well, from my understanding, the cook doesn't tell me much about what's put in the food, but uh, <laughs> it's some sort of bird, and it's very spicy. I don't want one that keeps coming back on me. I mean, if you got the bad constitution, I'm sure a lot of things might come back on you. Oh, and by the way, lad, you've got a bit of a rash on your chest there, I noticed. <clears throat> I mean, it's Ooh. kind of creeping up here. I've seen it before. You might want to go see the cleric. Which lad? The tall one with the, the funny looking helmet and talks funny. He spent some time outside yesterday. He must have gotten into something. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, come here, Rebecca, and I'll uh, it's, it's, tap less restoration. There we oh, go. Well, it's nice. You get to your own cleric in your group. It kind of might save you some coin on those nights you spend too much time down at the well, you know, where the lasses are at. Yeah, thanks, Serge. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> well, I think I'll waste it. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's for me, it's a second level spell, not really, and it's one of three, so I'm going to spare it. Yeah. Now, if everyone had it, it might be a different question. Well, I'm a multi-class caster, so I don't have as many spells left as you. I have a lot, <laughs> but I can go through them very quick. <laughs> okay, before we continue, let me go ahead and write over here. Sergeant Rock's uh, prostitute's name. Do it be. Now, what were the names of the two he turned down? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. that's on the other page. The high elf was kind of hard to pronounce. High elf's name was Drusia Lee, and the other one was, and well, he didn't get her name because as soon as she walked out, he's like, nope, don't like that one. <laughs> so he didn't actually get her name. So no. I'm not telling you it. That's a name yeah. I can use for somebody else's later. Hey, elf. Did you say help? Hi, elf. That's health. The health. The health. health. I think that'd be the half health, wouldn't it? Health. All right, so you've had your breakfast, and I need to get out of dwarf mode. You've had your <laughs> breakfast, and you've been told where to go find the hot groove. All right, so <laughs> groove. I'll go with you. Yeah, yeah. I'll go. Okay. Sure. Are you coming or are you going to stay behind? Well, I want to go shopping. I, I don't know. Is the hot groove a shopping place? It's, uh, if you want, if you want a tattoo, it's a place to go shopping, yes. I don't want a tattoo. I want to go shopping. Okay. Well, Where can I do that? I don't know. The bartender could probably tell you. I need to what find a super for? cheap ball, too. And we paid a cheap ball. Ball. So I, I said ball. I was like, you need no. to just in case Marcus gets hit with a with the stupidity spell again. Oh no, I got I got plenty of gold for, <laughs> or dust for that. But no, I need to like find a wooden ball, get to a jeweler, and be like, hey, see this shit great. ball? Have these amazing gems to encrust onto it, and then yeah, <laughs> I have Fearless feast. <laughs> it's like a shitty cracked wooden ball with these amazing gems. Okay, so how much is worth? Enough. <laughs> you make your way out. Mm -hmm. You're heading down towards town. Um, is there anything else you're looking for as you're heading towards uh, the directions you have? And uh, watching out for a jeweler on the way by. Okay, noted. And uh, an alchemist. Jeweler and alchemist are the two I'm looking for alchemist. on the way by. Corporal punishment. Did you want to ask? Yeah, I'm going to go inside and ask the bartender if he knows if 
if there are any good shops around and also if there are any churches you know <laughs> dime last yes there's churches you've got the temple districts got all kinds of churches you've got the I ones don't... to the dwarven gods you got the ones to the 12 you got the ones to i mean my god it's it's a big city there's you you go to the temple district you can't help but hit one if you speak okay are there any specific for paladin well i mean i if I'm not mistaken, every god has a paladin of some sort. Um, which particular are you looking for, lass? Well, I'm from the Order of the Merry Men. Who follow Bast. The Merry Men follow Bast. I'm sure if you make your way to the Temple District and tell them it, you know, who you particularly worship or, or serve, they may be able to point you in the right direction. And how would any... If how you many, just pull your nose... You know, once you smell cat box, you found it. And how about any shops that sell, um, see, I have a bunch of weapons, but I, I have, like, I need places to actually secure them. Um, I, I don't know what you call them. We call them cheese. No, if you're looking for the a general store, then. A general store or a leather worker? Well, there's a... Egeline's Wheel, you can find it near the Arcane Quarter, and that's um, that's one of our general stores. Let's see, what's the name of the other general store? Oh, uh, Bow Runs Trinkets. It's more of a, not just a general store at Bow Runs Trinkets, but he kind of dabbles with some more exotic items, if you know what I mean. That sounds like a fun place to go. Is that near the Temple District? Uh, let's see. That one is located near the gate. Where we came in? Um, yeah, it's just inside the main gate um, on the south side. Let's and and where is the temple district from where we're at? Temple district is more north from here. Ah, so I'll have to go south. They try to keep the temple district away from the Colosseum because, you know... Sometimes they bash heads and they deal with certain kind of aspects. Yeah. Temple District okay. doesn't like, you know, some of the churches are not too uh, fond of what happens at the Colosseum. And the Colosseum could give two sheets uh, about the dang uh, Temple District, if you know what I mean. I, I, I do understand that. Okay, so I'm going to head to the, the store first and then after that toward the Temple District. All righty then. Which one are you going to first? The store that's by the gates. All right, so that one is Bow Runs Trinkets. B O R U N apostrophe S Trinkets. Bow Runs Trinkets. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Okay. All right, so, uh, Serge, you said you were keeping your eye out for. Alchemist and a jeweler on our way to the uh, tattooer. All right, so as you're making your way towards the tattooer. You are heading down the main street. Um, let's see. With your perception, I will say you pick up a weird smell. And you can tell it's coming from a plaster simple built building uh, with reinforced wooden door and a small enclosed deck. There's a sign above it called the Unseen Libation. Okay. And you would recognize that as being some sort of alchemist shop. Alrighty. I'm going to catch up to you guys in just a second. And I'm going to pop in there real quick. Right. Okay, so you guys are splitting up. Of course. I'm going to be in here for just a very short amount of time. Alright, so... There is an argument for Rock to go in there, too, if they have some kind of, uh, of chemical potions that prevent disease. Or a cleric, druid, paladin that can all heal it. <laughs> <laughs> paladin just has to be like five minutes of land hands. Boom, you're good. Oh, yeah, that's right. Do, let's change something like that. 
Now that was the apothecary, right? It he it smells like an alchemist shop, yes. Okay. You also, you, okay, you don't see that because it's not anywhere near it. Uh, you do catch a glimpse of down the street from before you go into the libations, you see the I had a shop that I told her about, and you see her walking towards it. Uh, so what we'll do is first and foremost, we'll go for, um, boom. where am I at? Here I am. Byron's tr uh, trinkets. So you walk up to it. It's a brick two-story building with a gray tiled roof and finely crafted furniture inside. It contains a high vaulted ceiling and jars of bulky candy on the counter. Behind the counter, you see what looks like a male halfling. Hey, what can I do you for? Welcome to me trinkets. Good day, sir. Um, I am looking for some sheaths for my weapons. Sheaths for your weapons. I easy enough, I suppose. What weapons are you praying to? Well, I have come across several uh, swords. I have a, a great sword, a glaive, and another long sword that I need to. And you're going find to carry places. all those on yourself? Uh, well, yeah, I I already have my knock for my crossbow and a place for my war pick, and the flail is on my belt. The other three swords are just, it's just getting very bulky. Uh, I'd imagine so, I mean. So you need how many sheaths? I need three. And uh, all one is swords? A, one is a great sword, one is a long sword, and one is a glaive. Okay, uh, a glaive, hmm. Glaive, not really much of a sheath for a glaive. It's kind of a pole arm. Isn't a glaive a pole arm? Yeah. So, I was thinking something that might go on my back. I mean... So you want like a holder for it, not a sheath? Yeah, I, I don't know what you call them. Well, I mean, you can get a strap and tie a strap to it and drape it over your shoulder. I'm jumping okay. with my dwarf accent there. But... uh <laughs> As far as a sheath for a glaive, I don't know of one for those, but uh, I can give you a sheath for the other two. I'm going to say two gold apiece for two leather sheaths. And I, okay. Uh, Something hmm. that I don't know what you would call it, but whatever I could, like, if I could wear it on my back. Let's see. Uh, are you wanting one of these things special to hold all three at the same time? Oh, that would be great. Tell you what, can I see the web, the tools in which you're wanting these sheaths for? Sure, I can show them to you. Oh, please do, please do. So I'll pull out the Seric Iron Great Sword, mm -hmm. the Great Sword I was talking about. Okay, he he pulls and... out this what looks like a um, a roll of cloth that's got numbers on it. He just kind of rolls it out next to, and just starts you know he starts measuring the blade. Okay, and this is the glaive, and I'll show him that. Okay. And this is the long sword. And he I'll certainly show him measures that. that as well. And as he measures the glaive, he stops for a second and goes, "Uh, can you? One second. And you, he, he, not realizing he was standing on something, he jumps down. You can't see him behind the counter anymore, but you hear the scraping of wood against the floor, as he comes around the edge of the counter dragging this um, stool and he slides it up right behind you and says can you can you stand tall for me and not to move yes yes okay so he hops up on it and he's hooks it on the back of your collar or whatever you're, what you're wearing and just lets go and it rolls down to the floor hmm okay Thank you. You're welcome. Puts the chair back around behind the cabinet. 
he starts jotting down some notes and he's you know he's got his tongue sticking out staring off in space one eye closed and starts writing down some more stuff hmm let me do this I'm gonna do it this way and, and he draws out what looks like um, a sheath with you know the two swords crossing in the back and he says it's a clip of sorts but it's like this okay. this device it sits dead center of them okay he says so what will happen is you put one sword in here and one sword in here and you should be able to hook the glaive in the middle and you should that be able to carry all three of them at the same time that would be wonderful thank you it's going to take at least a day and a half to have made and it's going to be a specialty item so let's see so price for that let's say 200 gold okay all right and i'll throw some maybe i'll throw some bells and whistles you know make it match your outfit and he looks at you and he's like okay she wears this and kind of thing got the symbol you see him jot down and draw like your holy symbol and almost forgot about the horns and draw, write something else down <laughs> all right so give me a day and a half come back and see old bow on here and i'll take care of you we'll, we'll we'll have that ready for you okay and, and i also hear you have some more exact exotic items that may not be on display oh special things yes yes, yes. Bayron, bayron's the only one in town that handles special items but my stock is a little low but i do have some things is there anything particular you're looking for? Anything that could help me kill a lich? <laughs> you're funny. Um, so, first things first, I have... I have this nice paint. He, pull, he reaches behind him and he opens up a cabinet. And in the cabinet you see what looks like... Um, let's see. Let's actually look at that and tell you what the description of that is. I thought it's actually in... Ooh, excuse me, folks. I apologize for that. Alright, it's it looks like that cloth it's a robe that has cloth patches of various shapes and colors covering it. Well, I have this here. Now it's a very useful robe and it goes for about five hundred gold. Now I also yeah. have this, and he shows a, he pulls, points at a quiver, and the quiver has sixteen arrows in it. Now these arrows got these fancy little. Uh, uh, How many arrows? Sorry. Sixteen. Okay. And the 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 fletching on them. It looks like it's almost like it's not feather. It's almost resembles like maybe it might be scale in appearance. But it, it, you know, you can see him run his fingers across it, and it is definitely feather. But when it's not being touched, it looks like it's just a piece of a scale. Now, these, these are my prize. Unfortunately, they're very expensive. You, each arrow is seven thousand gold, but these wow. slay dragons. Dragon arrows. Yes. I had twenty. But a chap came in a few days ago and bought four of them. So that was a good day. So, yes, I have 16 more left. And my last item, and he points to what could only be considered a trident. Off to the side. And this here is my... My Aquaman trident. Okay. Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's the best way to describe it. I, I think I know someone that would like that. <laughs> and it will run you 500. Now, my, my trident here, it's, let's see if I can actually find, I think i scroll through it to bring up the actual description and stuff for you. The monk could use that, couldn't he? I don't know who could use the trident. Could, because he's also a barbarian. <laughs> yes, so you guys could use that. And what's so special about the trident? Well, it lets you. As soon as I actually find the actual thing for you, I'll tell you. Uh, 
And the cloak for that much. Well, like I said, the cloak is useful. For? It's just very useful. Okay. I see what it might be. Is yeah. it magical? Oh, yeah, it's very useful magical. things. Useful. Is it? Yeah, I was going to say. Okay. Is it useful for many things? <laughs> yes, it's useful for many, many things. Pretty much what you do is you pull the patch off, you throw it down, and it creates whatever the patch is, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Yeah, oh. that's basically it. Nice. Uh, where are you, you stupid fucking trident? <laughs> there it is. So, um, so what it is, is while you're carrying this weapon, you can use an action pretty much to expend one charge to cast Dominate Beast. And from it, on a beast that has a uh, innate swim speed. So it allows you to cast Dominate Beast on a creature of the sea. That sounds useful. We needed that a, a couple months ago when we were, uh, Trying to fix that ship. And how uh, many charges does it have on it total? Uh, it currently has three on it. Now, mind you, if you don't use up all charges in one day, it Just kind good. of replenishes. Yeah, it's the way magic items work. Well, I, um, I think one of my friends is going to be interested in the arrows. I am personally not. Okay. Well, However, the cloak I am interested in. No, it'd be 500 gold. And the trident. There's also 500 gold. And some of this bulk candy, can you tell me what it is? This candy? Uh, I mean... Um, well, we have that one there. It's kind of a chewy taffy um, that they make locally. Uh, it, they call it salt water taffy? I'm specifically looking for something that tastes like cherries. I love cherries. Oh, okay. Cherries. Uh, that hard candy over there in the grass jar there to your left, uh, that is kind of a cherry flavor, I believe. I will take that then. Okay. Does he have an apprentice named Bertie Bob? Uh, well. <laughs> so, hey, um, maybe he knows Willy Wonka. I don't know. Uh, that'll be, we'll say, two silvers for the entire container there, unless you just want a scoop. And then from that, we just do, like, uh, was it five copper for a scoop? I'll take the whole container. Okay, it'll be two silvers, and you said you wanted both these items. That'll be 500 apiece, so that'll be 1,000 1, gold. 1,000 gold and two silvers. Plus, oh, 1,000 gold plus 200 for the sheath. Yes, I wasn't counting your sheath. I believe the sheath okay, was so 300. 200. That's what you told me. Well, since you bought my other items, I'll, uh, we'll go with the 200. It'll be fine. All right, so 1,200 gold and, uh, you say five sills or two sills? Two sills. I think sales. you said two sills. Two sills. Okay. All right, then I will buy them. Okay. So he brings the robe down and kind of folds it up, puts it in a little box. Um, wraps the trident in paper, ties it a ribbon on it, and slides it across the counter. Puts his hand out for the gold. And I will pay him the 1200 gold and two sills. Uh, he walks around the counter, has a nice little leather pouch he pours the entire container into, cinches it up, and hands it to you. Nice. There you go. So that Excellent. is bought, and that is bought. I am sure my friend uh, will probably be down and uh, talk to you about these arrows. Very good. I hope to Are see we... them. Great. I will see you in a, about a day and a half then. Very well. Will do. Thank you. You have a good day. You too, man. All right. So you walk into the... What did I say you went into? You went into the... Um... Unseen libation. Yes. Yep, there it is. So, uh, let's see. I told you it was a simple building, reinforced woods. Uh, got a small enclosed deck. Uh, as you walk inside, there's like cobwebs up in the corner. Looks like a preserved salamander hanging from the ceiling. And there's a... Uh, apparently, they like a halfling. Um, apparently, there's a lot with halflings here. 
<laughs> there's a halfling sitting uh, over on a mortar pestle and he's like grinding something up and tasting it a little bit here's a bell go off as soon as you walk in the room it's like, oh customer <laughs> hey um what do you want yeah, I was wondering if I could get something appraised and might see if you have something else while. appraised oh you bring in oh, right you bring in yeah. some stuff uh -uh. okay yeah I'll look at it uh, some alchemy stuff Man. what you got I pull out a four ounce vial of hydraulic fluid uh -huh. and set it down in front of him. Is it clear? It's clear, isn't it? He kind of looks at it, shakes it, turns it sideways. Hmm, that's Big. awfully thick. Takes the Fiskers. cap off, sticks his... Oh, it's nasty, too. Um, that's, that's some nasty stuff. What is this? It's a form of oil. I was wondering if I could get that much praise to see how much it's worth, roughly. Hmm. Well, let's see. He carries it over to the side where the alchemy table's at and pulls out a little dropper and sticks it in it, pulls it out, and you see him, you know, squeeze it out in the... There's a name for it, and I don't know the name for it. Um, little glass jar... Mm -hmm. Puts a couple other ingredients. Petri dish? No, no, not a petri dish. It's um, in alchemy terms. There's a name for it. You've got your mortar and pestle, which allows you to grind down your items, and then you've got the mm -hmm. glass tubes and stuff. That's all. Uh, it's got a name for it. It starts with an A, but I can't remember it right off the top of my head. But anyway, he he starts dropping different things in it, and you see different colors change. It's like, ooh, hmm, interesting. Okay, uh, he rubs it on his fingers again. Uh, yeah, I do it this time. Uh, so you want to how much that all this is worth? Yeah, that four ounces right there. Mm. Let's see, shall we? Well, I mean, I could give you 3,000 gold for it. For the four ounces? Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> You've got the jackpot. I mean, that's what I can give you. Yeah, yeah, I can understand that. Uh, do you have any ungents around? Ointments? Um, rare o ointments or rare ointments? Like, like what you, are you looking for that... Um, that magic stuff you can rub on yourself and heal. Is that what you're looking for? Uh, what I'm looking for is um, for that spell reincarnate, it takes rare oils and unguents. Okay, so you're just looking for basic um, ingredients. Yeah, it doesn't say rare ointments, it just says ointments. Okay. Um, yeah, if you're looking for basic things, he does have them. Okay. Um, so, yeah, no. Four ounces is worth 3,000 roughly, so... Y'all motherfuckers can die a lot. <laughs> I was just thinking that, yeah, you have gallons of it. <laughs> Maybe. I may or may not have five gallons. <laughs> so five times 128 times, you know. Yeah, I think we'll be fine. It's fine. What's Although, your, what's so your, yeah, what's I'll... Your, uh, what's your passive, passive insight? 19. Oh, yeah, I thought when you were asking about ungans, I wonder if you were asking for a friend. <laughs> uh, so with your passive insight, you're certain that he's probably lowballing you a little. Yeah, when he said that's what he he could. Uh, I was making sure buy you as a player knew. Or if he was going to resell it, yeah, no, because he would have to resell it a little bit. But lowballing, um, yeah. So you want? Some... I'd be willing. To sell it to him for thirty five hundred worth of ointments. 
Okay. Um, if he has that much. Probably not. Yeah, I figured. But you're trying to but make a deal with him as far as making a trade. Yeah, yeah. Or how much does he have worth of uh, onions? Because I can tell that he's low-balling me. Uh, he's probably got maybe, you know, between the oils and engines that you want, and he might be able to get about a thousand dollars, a thousand golds worth. I'll say I'll try and. Uh, how about we trade twenty five hundred for that and a thousand gold worth of appointments? You know, buy him out. Is there nothing else you might want? Uh, not off the top of my head. I'm pretty good for right now. I might be back later, and I might have more of that. A potion of climbing. Okay, so got a climber's kit. <laughs> so healing potions. What did I do? Yeah, that's right. Okay, um, but I told you. And I can oh, tell so. you're low balling me. So give me a persuade. Oh, wonderful! Let's find my persuade. Just throwing that out there. That's one million nine hundred twenty thousand dollars. Oh, <laughs> fucking Christ! <laughs> that is an. Excellent... I don't think he has that much. That's an no. excellent persuasion you've got there. Yeah, it's ten. <laughs> yeah, and he agrees with you. So he'll give you a thousand golds worth of oils and engines, and then twenty five hundred. And twenty five hundred, perfect. I'll shake his hand. It's been a pleasure doing business with you, bud. Yeah, yeah, it's been a very good pleasure. He may even be back. Yep. Yep. Happy, yep. And you turn to walk out? Yeah, I'm going to walk out. Okay. So, all right, little halfling dude. Wow. Okay. And like I said, apparently that is the uh, message of the day. Halfling dudes everywhere. Because you've already been told that Tattoo artist. Tattoo artist is a halfling too. Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, there's my kind of people, I guess. I mean, yeah, your people are all over, apparently. All right, so we're taking care of that. That. So you make your way down towards the docks, and you do see um, a timber and brick simple building with several shuttered windows and a small enclosed deck. Um. In the windows, you do see different like artwork designs and stuff, and you see the uh, sign above the door, written in like flame, like it's got flames coming off the words, "The Hot Groove." And I'll catch up to him. You have a so, passive uh, perception yeah. that's pretty high, don't you? Twenty-one. You hear what could only be some weird noise coming from inside, as well. Okay. Um, it's instruments, but you've not heard them played like that before. Okay. Gonna go into the shop. As soon as you go in, you know, same deal. You have a uh, bell ringing. Uh, there's this little halfling up on a stool. There's this um, you can this big burly fella laying face down on a, a table in front of her, and she just actually she's up on the table she's sitting on his backside as she's uh, tapping something in his back I'll be with you in a minute I'm busy right now another half take your time but at the, same, time. at the same time you hear uh, you hear this weird music it's kind of heavy like uh, somebody was would strum a loop but it would reverberate as it was strummed uh, okay. And you hear what could only be the sound of like a half orc like screaming uh, in his language <sighs> with the sound of the lute and some, you know, beating on drums. So, it does I'm going to go matter. find the stage where these people are playing. Uh, there's no stage, it's just playing in the air. Huh. Weird. I'm going to walk around and look at the uh, examples of art that she has on the walls. 
All right, well, there's several different designs. You name it, she can draw it. Anything particular you're looking for? I'm looking for an art style that can blend several magical, several magical effects into one cohesive design so that they don't counteract each other. Well, I mean, it depends upon what effects you're looking for. I guess is the best way. Um, does she have like a list of effects, or that she can that she can tattoo in, or how does she? What does she have? What does she have? And as far as you can tell, right now she just has the pictures up on the walls. All right, so I guess I'm gonna need to talk to her. Yeah, you, you man. There's like some that. Uh, what is this one here? One that looks like uh, the uh, symbols of life and rebirth. Um, Let's see, another one that, that one I can't tell you because of what it is. We got one that looks kind of like a ghost, um, I guess, or a specter of some sort. You have one that looks like um, a spell scroll rolled out with nothing written on it. Uh, let's see... Um, one that looks like a masquerade mask. Okay, let me see what I can find. Let's see. There's an abstract. Uh, where's the other one? One that looks oh, like yeah. claws. Where's this at? The children's four corners. It's a Celtic symbol. Oh, that. Okay. Or Celtic shield knot. It's gone. Okay. All right. Well, there's several different ones, so you have to wait until okay. she's done. That's fine. I'm looking around and. I'll look for things that I think could help me in my professional endeavors. Uh, you find Just picture wise, I think would look really cool in my professional endeavors. Yeah, well, you see several cool looking tattoos. You can see a semblance of that on the wall somewhere. Like you said, there's all sorts of different art, different pictures. There's anywhere from the you know the basic sailor girl sitting on a, a keg to um, extravagant sceneries. Uh, but it splashes of color, just, and of course you've got a few of them that look like at people's faces. What that? What's that all about? Uh, you've seen the runic symbols that was on the dwarf's arm from the bar, and uh, you do see a price listing. Awesome. Um, you see, um, six-inch tattoos are about a hundred gold. Um, Half limbs or scalp tattoos go for about 500 gold. If you want an entire limb done, that's about 5,000 gold. If you want two limbs or your, you know, your upper chest, your upper back done, that's 50,000. Uh, if you want two limbs and the torso done, that's going to be up to roughly about 500,000. Multiple trips this must take. Okay. So you need to make sure you put the cream on it to make sure it doesn't get too dried out and keep it from getting infected. We don't want you to have it happen to you what happened last time when you had to have your skin scraped from the last tattoo I gave you. Please take care of it. It now, sounds like she's saying it puts the lotion on its skin. Yes, or I have That's to what scrape it's told. It <laughs> Alright, so head back to your ship and keep it clean. So, what can I do for you? I'll, uh, I'll go up to her and I'll speak to her in Halfling. Um, hey. Just <laughs> say, well, I'm, I'm going out and I've been running into some trouble and I've, I found that there are some skills that I don't have that I need. And I heard tell that there was an artist in the city who could draw tattoos when, and imbue them with magical powers to give 
different traits to the person who wears them. Or is that you? I can do some of that, and it will cost you... I understand. So, there's only a few that I can do at the moment. Uh, I can give you a list and tell you what they do, and we can go from there. Okay? Okay. So, the first one I call the Absorbing Tattoo. Uh, incorporates uh, this different designs, pretty much um, depending upon what I put on you and how you like the coloring. It can give you some resistance to certain damage types. You know, uh. like acid, cold, lightning, those kind of things. Um, let's see, we also got my barrier tattoo is what I call it. Now, and she points at an image, uh, looks like a protective imagery and what this one here does is uh, it gives you more of a it makes it harder for other people to hit you mm. is that something that you activate or is it, is it constant uh, that would be constant but see it's a different sizes for different kinds you know depending upon how much protection you might want do you know what I mean Oh, I understand. So there's this one, and she shows you one that takes up like a couple inches or so. Or no, that was a... It's like, like your, a six-inch tattoo? It's like your forearm. It's, a, it's like a Celtic symbol around the forearm. This one here um, will allow you to uh, act as if you're... You are right. I'm beating up the gap. Oh, okay. <laughs> Make it sure. Um, this one here will allow you to feel as if you're wearing some armor and still be nimble enough to, you know, get out of the way. And then there's, she shows you another one that looks like it takes up the entire arm. And it's kind of like spiraled Celtic symbols that come all the way up the arm to the shoulder. Um, if you look at it real closely, it almost looks like they mesh to a point of looking like scales. This one is... A little more protective than the other one, of course, because you know it covers more skin. And this one is pretty much what I'll tell you what it does instead of giving descriptions. Uh, the one that does the full arm is 15 plus your dex modifier, maximum two. The uh, six, the one that does just like the forearm is 12 plus your dex modifier. Mm. Is there one that just gives you a bonus to what you already have? Um, we'll go through the rest of the list and see. And, <laughs> but then she shows you another one that shows, like, this. there's this one here that you can do for either, you know, we can do it on both arms the same way. It gives you an 18 to your dex. Or you can, like, do the chest, your back, and it does the same thing. Okay. That's a lot of money. Uh, of course, these tattoos require attunement. If you deal with any kind of magic-based items, you know what I mean by that. You have to mm -hmm. kind of concentrate and make sure your body is ready to use it. Now, you can become unattuned, have the artwork on there and not do anything for you, and then you go back and attune to it later if that's what you wish to do. All right, so let's see. What's the next one I have? Oh, here's this one. I call it Coiling Grasp Tattoo. And it looks like uh, intertwining designs. And what this one does... Uh, as an action, cause a tattoo to extrude into an inky tendrils, which reaches for a creature that you can see within 15 feet. The creature must make a save or take force damage and be grappled by you. Oh. That one sounds like Mr.'s No No, Naughty No No. But it comes from you and it's not necrotic. Uh, that, one, that one sounds interesting. Is that a six inch tattoo? Let's see, that one there would be more of a forearm kind of thing. So it's a wrap around the forearm? Yes. Okay. It's a half a limb. Ignore that roll. Or your scalp. Uh -huh. Or my scalp. Or your scalp if you want your scalp. Okay. Right, so, uh, let's see, that's another one of those that requires attunement. Then we have this one, it's called the Eldritch Claw Tattoo. Now, what this one does uh, requires human, of course. 
Your unarmed strikes are considered magical for the purpose of overcoming immunity and resistance to non-magical attacks, and you gain a plus one bonus to attacks and damage rolls with it. Mm. So it makes my fists magical weapons? Yes. Okay. No, I don't get a plus one to strike, though. That's a big deal. Yes, plus one to attack, plus one to damage. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty big deal. And that one's a tattoo on your hands? Let's see. That one, yes, it'll be more like your hands for that one. Now, uh, let's see. That one also has a bonus to it. You can empower them. So for one minute, while it's empowered, it can use the bonus action. It, it allows you to use what's called Eldritch Maul. For the duration, uh, each of your melee weapon attacks can reach a target up to 30 feet away from you. It's like a melee attack 30 feet away? Yes. That's awesome. As tendrils of ink launch from your uh, weapon or your unarmed strike towards the target. In addition, your melee weapon attacks deal an additional 1d6 force damage on a hit. Once used, this bonus action can't be used again until the next dawn, so you'd need to rest after doing it takes a lot out of you and that's another also it's, a, it's like once a day right not a long rest but once a day yes once a day well once a long rest i'm sure i mean it's if you just finish a long rest you do it into another long rest and i'll tell you no it's not gonna work okay uh let's see we also have this one i call blood fury uh this tattoo evokes fury in its forms and colors while this tattoo is on your skin you gain the following benefits. Your attack rolls score a critical hit on a d20 roll of 19 or 20. When you score a critical hit against a creature, that target takes an extra 46 necrotic damage, and you gain a number of temporary hit points equal to the necrotic damage dealt. <laughs> when a creature you can see damages you, you can use your reaction to make a melee attack against that creature with advantage on your attack roll. As a reaction? Now that one is... Mm, that one actually covers the full arms and the chest area. Oh, that's a big one. Okay, so that okay. is that one. That now there's this expected. one is the Illuminator's Tattoo. It's only about six inches. Uh, this tattoo contains beautiful calligraphy images and writings... Uh, while this tattoo is on your skin, you can write with your fingertips as if you were a, if you were an ink pen that never runs out of ink. As an action, you can touch a piece of writing up to one page in length and speak a creature's name. The writing becomes invisible to everyone other than you and the named creature for the next 24 hours. That's pretty cool. So that gives you a way to send like secret messages. Nice stuff. All right, then here's this one. This is uh, called the Life Well Tattoo. Um, this one's, what's this one cover? This one covers either your chest or upper back. This one's going to be, uh, we'll say your chest area, like around where your heart's at. And what it does is when you drop and reduce to zero hit points, you only drop to one instead. It automatically gives you death ward. Wow. And you have resistance to necrotic damage while you have it. Then we have the next one, which is called a ghost step tattoo. Ghost step. This one shifts and wavers on your skin. Parts appear to be blurred. It has three charges. Of course, it, re it regains them after a day, uh, recharges daily. You have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, slashing damage from non-magical attacks. You can't be grappled or restrained. You can move through creatures and solid objects if they were difficult terrain. If you end your turn in a solid object, you take a d10 force damage. If the effect ends while you are inside a solid object, instead you are shunted to the nearest unoccupied space and you take 1d10 force damage every 5 feet of travel. So that's huh. that one. And that but one, if you ended your turn inside of another person, would they take the force damage with you? No, that one you'd just be pushed out. If you or move, if you were in a pillar of rock. Or solid object, as if it's all difficult terrain, if you end your turn, pretty much it's talking about, you know, if you try to walk through stone and such, and then you can't get through the stone within your move. That's what I'm saying, though. If you ended your turn inside of another person, then 
would they take the force damage with you? It just shunts you to to you, to an opposite spot. Okay. All right. So then we have the masquerade tattoo. As a bonus action, you can shape the tattoo into any color or pattern, and move it to any area on your skin. Uh, that is a like a little six-inch deal. Takes whatever form. Uh, always obviously a tattoo. It can range in size. Uh, as an action, you can use the tattoo to cast the Disguise Self spell. Once the spell is cast from the tattoo, it can't be cast from the tattoo again for another 24 hours. Or at least till next dawn, is what it says. Then you have the Spell Rot Tattoo, which is one that looks like a spell scroll. It contains a single spell of up to 5th level. To use the tattoo, you must hold the needle against your skin where you want the tattoo to appear and speak the command words. Let's see what it is there. Once the spell ends, the tattoo vanishes. So that's going to be... It's a one-shot, huh? That's kind of a one-shot deal. Depending upon the spell level you want, depends upon how much it's going to cost you. Okay. And the last one that she can do for you is called the Shadowfell. Shadowfell brand. Uh, this tattoo is a dark, is dark color and abstract. While it's on your skin, you have advantage on dexterity stealth checks. When you take damage, you can use your reaction to become shadowy and substantial for a moment, reducing the damage you take by half. Once used, next on. It's like having a canny dodge. So, to any of those sound um, like you might be interested? Um, I think I might. I'd be interested in that the Eldritch Grass one you talked about. I, on, I, of course, I do have the basics, which require um, the gemstones uh, powder to create, which you can get a plus to an ability score, and those uh. will be uh, fifty thousand apiece, and they're plus two to ability scores. They make you stronger, make you faster, make you more. Charismatic, you know things like that. Okay. So those those you have on top of all the others I've mentioned. How much does that tattoo can make you fireproof, fire resistant? Fire resistant. Let's see that one. Absorbing tattoo. That one you can get either on a full chest or upper back or your arms, and that will run you about fifty thousand. Is there a payment plan? <laughs> yes, yes, there is. The payment plan is as such. You pay me, and I put the tattoo. On <laughs> Do you take trade, or does that, or do you take items and trade? Uh, no, I'm sorry. This is strictly a gold transaction. I have no way of getting rid of any of your items you may have stolen from somebody, and I'm not going to get involved in that. Now, if you uh, want to you think go so and little find... of me. Hmm? You think so little of me. Well, you know, I know our kind. <laughs> With uh, all these all these hobbits running business, I'm starting to picture Ferengi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to send a message to Serge just telepathically, yeah. um, asking him if I, if I can have a few ounces of his oil to go and sell and get some cash for a tattoo. Well, you don't know what, how much his oil sell, sold for. I thought he, we, because he's here with us right now. Uh, he uh, went inside the alchemy as you guys kept it going. It took some time to get it. Okay, so, so I thought he said that he, was, that he like, went much. there, we waited and talked with him, and then we just went from store to store on our way down. No, we pressed on without him. Okay, so we, we two, Rock and I, are at the tattoo parlor right now. And yes. Serge is on his way back to us after speaking with the alchemist. I'll catch up with us. Okay. Ross, okay. You mentioned a a, a one-off tattoo that casts a spell and then it's gone. Yep. And uh, if was one wanted a first-level spell of one of those. Okay. So uh, can trips and first levels are going to be about a hundred gold. If you want a second or a third level, that'll be about 500 gold. And if you want a fourth or a fifth level, that's 5,000 each. So if I got a uh, an absorb elements tattoo, 
That's only first level. Okay, so yep. that'll be 100 gold. But it's a one shot, so as soon as you use it, it's gone. Yeah. Right. It but could be very perfect. useful. Um, yeah. Can that. It's an awesome spell. So I've been thinking I would like to get two of those, one on each arm. And uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm playing like they, uh, it just so happens they look like uh, a couple of rockers and a couple of chevrons. <clears throat> <laughs> 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 That's uh, and uh, that gives an opportunity to absorb elements twice we need it okay well, um, you have it um, one way to get pins right she sits down and starts inking your arm oh uh, scratch off 200 so uh, spells that aren't in your class or do they have to be in your class it's any spell you don't have to cast it so, Even yeah. a spellcaster doesn't have to use it no, it's not something that's got to be in your class to cast. It's just um, a tattoo, uh, whatever spell level. Can she do a blank scroll that I can have a spellcaster cast a spell into to recharge it? Oh, like no. uh, detect thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope. Yeah, I was like thinking this... more like have you guys cast a fireball into the scroll that I can just wear, and then I have one fireball cast every day. I mean, we could just, you know... You want her to, you want her to make one for you levels. that's rechargeable. Yeah. Oh, a rechargeable tattoo. Yeah, if you could do like a, a scroll, and then they can cast a spell into the scroll hand, and then once a day I can use that. That'd be interesting. Come on now. She's talented. I have I'm faith sure, in her. I'm sure she is talented. It's just what it's going to cost you. No, I understand. It's probably going to be pricey. But so Rock's in here getting tattooed. It's probably going to take him a while to get tattooed. Long enough for Surge to catch up to us? Surge comes in about the time she's got the outline done on his uh, left shoulder. Or left shoulder. Yeah, left okay. shoulder. Now, these one-shot tattoos, are those attunable? No. The tat all the tattoos are attunable. Every single one of them is. No, except the one-shot tattoos. Ones. Yeah, the the one-shots aren't, no. No, they're not attunable. And how all much the ones that actually cash comes there. Third level will cost you five hundred. Yeah, because do they you take material components? Those spells? No material components required no, to cast no, you it. Just, it just casts it. Okay. This, so the greatness about this one shot is even if it is a spell that requires material components, you can cast it for free, basically. Yeah, so that's what I was guys thinking. Want a little more in depth. Uh, here you go. Yeah, I I figured that you were looking at those and I was looking at spells anyway. So if they don't have to be from my class, that'd be useful for like, you know, a quick pop someone up with a revivify. Mm -hmm. What level spells spell. what level spells revivify? Third, I think. Third. Okay. But yeah, so it's basically like we could all get a revivify tattooed on our arms so that all of us could save each other. Yeah. Or you could get death ward tattooed on yourself. Death ward. Ooh, yeah. and that one's permanent. But death that, ward's permanent. Uh, there's a death yeah. ward. But that is tattoo is permanent. Oh, yeah. her death it's ward just... tattoo. Yeah, yeah, the one that makes you go down to one hit point instead of dying. Yeah. Unless... Yeah. That one was the. Barrier tattoo? No. no life well. Life well. And that one is a yeah. rare, so that's about 5,000 for that. And that pretty much yeah. means you have Death Ward on you once per day. Or you can do the throwaway tattoo that disappears after the initial use and have Death Ward t uh, put on it. Death Ward's mm -hmm. what level spell? It's fifth. Um, it's what? It's fifth level. It's very expensive. So it would be the same is price. It? So it'd be, it costs the same to do it once or permanent. Yep. Yeah, you might as well get it permanent. Yep, yeah. but you have to attune to the spell. Oh, use the, the tattoo. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Is it'd be cool to get one of these, but I like the items I have attuned currently. I have a free slot. Yeah, well, technically I have a free slot, but how much do you need? So, I think the one I want is fifty thousand. Which one is that? 
Well, because <laughs> the one I wanted originally, that like the one that isn't ex that expensive is the Eldritch Hand one or whatever. Uh -huh. Eldritch Claw. Eldritch Claw. Um, yeah, the Eldritch Claw. But then she talked about the. Uh, the, the life oh no there's the one that she was talking about towards the end the shadow fell brand okay that one is no not that one either dang it what's the one that was like it was like chest and arms it was well the shadow shadow fell one is when it's chest and arms no it's chest or arms yeah, because another good one would be well, that Ghost wanted... Step. Ghost Step, I think that's what it was. That's the Ghost Step I already have, basically. Barbarian without, yeah. It's like being a barbarian without being a barbarian. No, the one you're talking about, one -third I think, might be it. the Blood Fury tattoo. Yes, I think that's what I was talking about. Extra damage. You crit 1920. Yeah. Yes, my crit goes down to 1920. Yeah. But that's a expensive tattoo. Yeah, so 500,000 and it covers chest and arms. Okay. So, oh, it's out of UA. Wow. Mm -hmm. So get... it could change. I might be able to talk her into giving me a discount. And how they were 500,000 for the uh, ability score improvements? No, the ability score is 50,000. 50,000 for the ability score. Yeah. Okay. Because that gives you a permanent increase to your ability score. Are those well, ones attunable, or are those just no? You know, nope. Pop you just have a tattoo that gives you a that gives you a plus two. Pretty much. So would you allow me to get fireball tattooed on each of my fingers? <laughs> a... Ten fireballs. At what level? Let's see. Oh. Third level. That'd be five thousand. And it's what level? Third. Yep. He can attune to three Hold on. fingers at a time. You don't need to attune to them. They're one shots. Oh, you There's don't have ten to. free spells. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> ten third level fireballs. The problem is, Fuck it, you. it won't be a finger. It's gonna have to be like a forearm. Oh. I mean, you yeah, can cover your body and tattoos. See, for, tattoos. For an uncommon, I mean, for an literally. Tattoo. It takes up half a limb or a scalp. But at the same time, you have to you have to use it as an action. Like, so you had ten of them. True. If, if you want to look like Bam Bam Bigelow, you can shave your head and tattoo a fireball. Yeah, it's just one big fireball. Well, you, already, you'd look yeah. like oh, what's that? Oh, what's that bastard off of those Twisted Metal games? What's that clown called? I have no idea. Oh, I know you're talking about uh, Sweet Tooth. Yes. You could look like Sweet Tooth. <laughs> You're already kind of gaunt anyway. So would that fireball, would all 10 be in, viewed into that one, or would it have to get 10 fireballs? You'd have to have 10, you'd have to have 10 body parts tattooed for the fireball. I mean, head, one, two, head, shoulders, three, knees, four, yeah. How about the schlong? Oof. Yeah. Not big enough. Oof. <laughs> I mean, roll He's for it. <laughs> no, you'd have to be like some other race. A Goliath. A Goliath. Uh, an Atar, something. Oh yeah. But yeah, no, I, I'm. It'd be nice, but I'm just. I have items that I really like in in place, but. If that guy has enough money, I might consider selling some of that oil to him, so I could get a ability score improvement if he had the money. Let's see, you went to uh, unseen libations, okay. and... and I doubt he has enough. Oh, he does. Of course, he does. Oh no! no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see how much does he have? To say, sell it all. We just retire. Uh. And... I did this, and it's 560,000 gold at 3,500 gold piece. So it's half a million gold pieces and change. Uh, yeah, he doesn't have that much. 
because you know it was three thousand gold pieces an ounce and i have fuck let me do the math again there's one of 28 ounces, 20 ounces a gallon. Yep, times five gallons which is 640 yeah, times 640. Yeah. yeah that's 640 ounces times what i say was 875 an ounce which is 560,000 gold. Yeah, he doesn't know uh, much. Yeah, I figured not. Because, you know, I could go back, but I doubt he'd have enough to even get 50,000. All right, so, um, what's going on? But, so how much is the Eldritch Claw tattoo? That one, 500. Okay, and how much is the Blood Fury tattoo? The Blood Fury will be 500,000. It's 500,000. Yeah, it covers yeah. a little cover, bit outside my price range. Yeah, it'll cover your arms and your chest. All right, I will get the claw, claw tattoo. All right, so take off the 500 and wait in line. Got it. Yeah, well, I got there first. How much is the yeah. ghost what, tattoo? That one's rare. <laughs> Goes fifty thousand. Yeah, if it's uh, rare, it's fifty thousand. Oh. All right. Well, Rock's happy. He he just wanted to have rank insignia stitched uh, onto his arm, and when it goes away, he'll come back. <laughs> How much gold does that guy have? If I were to go back and talk to him, if I were to con like see about selling well, some of that oil to him. I mean, he already got two thousand five hundred of his gold. Yeah. Yeah. So I doubt he has a whole lot or enough. But um, I have an idea, but you don't. Yeah. I mean, I could go back and talk to him. You could. Yep. While they're getting their tattoos, I'll just go back, see how much he can afford to buy. Right. To Unseen Libations. As you're walking back towards Unseen Libations, Corporal Punishment and Fred are walking up the road in your direction. Um, Actually, Fred's at the tavern. I didn't take Oh, okay. Uh, hey, so, yeah. uh, Serge. Yeah, what's up? Hey, do you know anyone that would be interested in some dragon arrows? Mmm... None of us really use a bow and arrow, but you can go talk. Uh, I think Dux is really the only one that can use a, a bow, so you can ask him. I also got this really cool trident um, that um, can dominate water creatures. Mm. Yeah, let me... I think a trident is... Is that a martial weapon? Martial weapon. I think so. Yeah, because yeah. if it is ducks again, would be the only one <laughs> that could use a trident. Okay. Like, let me see if I can spice that up. If I were to do that uh, minor illusion thing I was doing that made him look like Aquaman, Aquaman. Martial weapon again. Yeah, trident. Okay. So. Uh, is he still at the tattoo place? Yeah, he's down there, and I'll describe the building to you. Okay. Hey, Chris, here's oh. your, there's your robe, by the way. Hopefully that'll ring up for you. And you go walking in, bell rings, and he's you know you you smell the burning smell of whatever in the air. You can't really it's you know got some acidic smell to it. Maybe a little bit of a coppery tinge in the back of your mouth when you breathe it in. There's smoke all over the place. Smells like air. Oh 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 oh! You're back. Okay. Yeah, I was. Uh thinking about selling you some of that oil you did sell me some oil i bought it for some $2. more if you're yeah some more if you're interested you got more of that a little bit a smidge a smidge more well i mean how much are we speaking how yeah. much can you afford to buy <laughs> Uh, I've been someplace that's from and from the past that may have been where I found it. 
confusing. But okay. A little bit. How much can I afford? I mean... Yeah, I don't know if you can afford all of it from the amount I sold you I earlier. I could probably buy the same amount you've already sold me. Cash out, I guess. Of course, it'd have to be the straight cash out, not the trade thing we did, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. <sighs> Do you know anyone in town who can afford a large quantity to buy who would be interested? Ooh. Mm. I guess it would depend upon the size of the quantity. I mean... I've not found much more that I can use it on, but I do know there's some spell components and stuff that you could probably use it with. Yeah, because I'm planning on using it to reincarnate some party members if they were to go down and we can't reincarnate them in time, well, or re revive them in time. I mean, you've got the Temple District. You could probably find a buyer there for some of it. Um, there's also the Arcane District. I don't know if any of those wizards would use any of it. Uh, and other than that, I mean, I mean, I know there's a black market somewhere, but I have no idea how to find it. Insight. Go ahead. Just pass when he says that. Passive is nineteen. Yeah, you think he's telling the truth? All right. Alright, yeah, no, I'm just... I went down to, uh... I don't know if you've heard of her. The, uh, Hot Grove. Oh, yeah. North down <laughs> there. Ain't she a looker? Yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> Not really my type, but... I don't know, did I even describe, I can see did I even my describe her to you? Um... Probably. No, let's, you didn't. Okay. Let's, let's find what? out. Yeah, sure, she's a looker. <laughs> No, I mean, I, I, I didn't actually describe her to you. I didn't bring it up. Uh, um, she's a halfling, is yeah, what you said. She's a halfling. She's in excellent shape and wears a fancy green dress. She has styled her hair, her blonde hair well, parted it to the right. Her gray eyes have a joyful gleam in them most of the time. Um, so... It's an 11. Uh, yeah. That's the best way to describe what I'm trying to say here. You've seen the... Um, there's some, how to put it, I'm sure you guys have seen uh, some pictures of some of the women that like to dress up in the old style of uh, dress with the, the, the like 50s and 60s hairstyles, almost like flappers mm -hmm. and such, up. but you know, they're, they're covered in tattoos as well. Yeah, pinup girl. Something like that. Well, that's pretty much what she looks like. She comes up to about my waist. <laughs> But apparently, she looks pretty good. <laughs> well, I mean, you you, you are tall, and I mean, she's not that short to me. <laughs> I'm really working on this love potion. I wonder if it'll work. Oh, I'm sorry. You were. Do you need any help what, with it? Maybe. Huh, what? What? Uh, no, uh, huh? I'm more of a herbalist myself, but I mean, I might be able to guide you in some aspects and assist you. Let's see. What level would that be anyway? But yeah, if he can do another... Mm -hmm. He can do rough. about roughly another 3,000. Let's just hit all of them. <laughs> 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 Let's see. <laughs> this, how much do you need for recombination? Roughly 42,000. <laughs> no, I'm for saying the tattoo for, I'm looking for. No, for your reincarnation spell. Oh, 1,000. Okay. Gold worth comes out to just over like an ounce and a quarter. Okay. You got 600 some odd ounces? Oh, yeah. I got a lot. A uh, gallon is. Uh, 128. Yeah. 
Yeah, something like that. 28 times 6 or 8, 75, 112. Or if I can get it for 1,000 on the dot, that's 128,000. You yeah. said that the ability score improvement is 5,000, right? 50. It's 50,000 for an ability mm -hmm. score improvement. Yeah. yeah. A lot. Yeah. Is it subject to the ceiling? Can you go to 22? I guess I can read this thing. Here. It's. Mm, if you get the tattoo, I'll allow it to break the 20 uh, ceiling. But, but you get more than one? I think you only get one. You only get one. Yeah, because I was looking at that and then, you know. Now, mind you, if you get this and it brings you to a certain point, you can't go past the ceiling if it, you know, if you're, you're not already at the ceiling. You know what I mean? Yeah, so what you about might want to wait uh, to get this until you hit the ceiling and then go get I, it. And I have. And that's why I was wondering, uh, like, what about those books as well? The books go past the ceiling. It doesn't matter if you're already at 22, 23. The That's books add plus curious. five. It, it doesn't matter what you're already at. Two. It depends on the book. Yeah, because the wisdom book adds plus two. Oh, never mind. Sorry, the belt. The belt's a plus five. I was thinking of giants, the, like, yeah, the yeah, yeah. cloud giant strength or whatever. Yeah, yeah but the book yeah, adds the plus two. And it doesn't books. matter if you're already at the ceiling. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, you over here and say something about this new potion he made. Called a filter of love. A filter of love. What's it do? Uh, what? Oh, I'm sorry. You, you, I didn't. Did I say that out loud? Kind of. I'm. I can kind of of uh, overhear things on occasion. Oh. I'm a little uh, perceptive. Well, it, it's something new I made, and you know, it's it's a love potion, if you must know. Is that like your ninth iteration, maybe? Or have you tried it a couple times, or is that your first time? Or the song. <laughs> <laughs> Love potion number nine. I've tried a few times, and it doesn't turn out too well. It doesn't last real long, though. And then there's an every action. But, I mean, I get hmm. an hour out of it. Oh, there you go. It can be handy in the right circumstances. I had a character get one a long time ago, and... Uh, I had it around for a couple of years, but then when I used it, it was used to good effect. <laughs> and not with some half elf, right? Yeah, <laughs> not half elf. No. Yeah, use a love potion on this uh, halfling to get a discount on the tattoo, and in the middle of it, it runs out. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I have this ha angry half elf or half halfling with. Yeah, and a rather damaged needle. And no telling I mean, what your tattoo will look like when she's done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What price are you looking on that? What? Uh, huh, what? You, you want to buy my... Uh, just curious. Just gonna, I'm awful curious. I'm kind of going to use it, but... Uh, I mean... Portrait? Uh, 89, 86 gold, I guess. 86? Yeah. I mean, how hard is it to make those? Mm, I don't know. So, all the rest of them weren't very good, so I don't know if this one works or not. I haven't tried it yet. I might send someone down this way. They might have an idea of how to use it. If you make another, that is. I guess I Thinking could you might I make some I, more? I could work on that. Why is it so low? Oh, whatever. <laughs> so... So is yeah. there anything else you want me to do for you? And please don't tell her that I made one. I have no idea who you're talking about, friend. <laughs> I have an idea, but I have no idea who he's talking about, is what I'm telling him. He's going to wind up with half a tattoo and a big scar. <laughs> <laughs> That's up to him. So, I know you're trying to lowball me a little bit earlier, but What's a thousand an ounce say? Sound like? Okay, so how much did you give him the first time? Like it was four ounces, right? Thirty-five hundred. Yeah, it was thirty-five hundred for the four ounces. Yeah, 
so you want me to give you another thousand on top of what I already offered you for the same stuff. It was five hundred more. So he's just asking for a thousand an ounce instead of eight seventy five an ounce. Yeah. Which doing the math means a thousand more. Five hundred more. Mm, well, it's five hundred more than what he spent last. Because we time. traded and last time at a trade. Yeah. This time it's, he said he could pay him three thousand straight out, but now he's one two. And I have no idea who he's talking about using the love potion. <laughs> so give me a persuasion. Ah. Uh, uh, and we'll one. see how persuasive you can be. Oh, I'm gonna guide myself. I, I gotta find persuasion first. You know, you should uh, wild shape into a penguin because they're so adorable. Nobody can do this. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Oh, but then you can't talk. So <laughs> he starts chewing on his lip a little. Kind of catches yeah, your meaning about not knowing who he's talking about. Uh, okay, I guess. Um, sure, thousand an ounce will be fine. And the hush money, which is apparently what you're doing for me now. Yep. <laughs> so how much can he afford? Three thousand. <laughs> three thousand. Yeah, I'll give him three ounces. I mean, that's all he's. That's all he's got left now. He's. Yep. He has no money left to spend. He's got a coin shortage. <laughs> <laughs> He's not the crab out in the swamp. So, hope that love potion works for you. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Take care. Have a good day. I appreciate it. Did you, do you don't want anything else? I might be down, down with the rest of the guys. And maybe... Uh, uh, we have a, a tiefling who might be interested in some stuff here as well. Okay. And they seem to be getting their tattoos, so they might be for something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Out the door. Dummy, dummy, dummy. You should have spoke so loud. You're still really short for that tattoo, though. Only forty eight ish thousand short. short, or that's how much you have. Short. <laughs> I have some platinum, which is only eighty gold. You know, I have some things. Ooh, jeweler. We yeah. I have a jewel that's worth a little bit. All right. So you were looking for one of those a minute ago, weren't you? Yeah. If you want to deal with someone else, that's fine first. All right. So. Corporal Punishment makes her way into the tattoo establishment, and you see this little halfling girl, all covered in tattoos, and nice little green dress on uh, Sarge's ar arm, just, just putting some weird symbols on him. Um, okay. Hey, uh, Ducks, can I talk to you for a minute? Hi. So, um, I got this here trident, um, um, Serge said maybe you can use it. Oh, I don't know how to use a trident. So, um, the trident allows you to dominate a sea creature. He called it an Aquaman uh -huh. trident. And he said there's three charges on it and one replenishes every day. Okay. But do you want it? So you can charm a sea creature. It, uh, he said you can dominate a beast, which a uh, creature of the sea. Okay. Huh. I mean, I got it. I figured somebody could use it. Third said you're probably the only one that can. I mean, I can hold on to it, and if we come up against this, another leviathan or something like that, we can try to charm it instead of fighting a dragon turtle. We can write it. <laughs> so Jamak yeah. theorizes that uh, if he makes you look like Aquaman again, you'd get it. Uh, he'd have disadvantage on his saving throw. I could just wear the hat. <laughs> I could wear the hat and look like Aquaman and then hold the trident. <laughs> yes, <you're> right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even need the rock anymore. 
And also, uh, um, the guy had these uh, dragon arrows. What what were so special about the arrows? So the the the, the thing on it looks like a feather, but it's actually made out of a dragon scale. Huh. And he said somebody had been in and bought four of them already. What do they do? I, I don't know. I no, I, w I don't know how to use them. He said he had ah. sixteen of them left. There's seven thousand gold apiece. Oh, it's a little bit pricey. Well, I mean, they do have a dragon scale on them, and I guess they're like special. Like the trident was special. So. Hmm. Okay. Well, oh, thank you. You're welcome. I hope you can use the trident. I can't use it, but I thought I'd pick it up just in case somebody could. So. Uh, it might come in handy on our next sea voyage. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'll have to attune to it instead of my axe. All he right, said it's well, called Trident of Aquaman. He called it an Aquaman Trident, and he said it has Dominate Beast on Creature of the Sea, three charges total, one recharge per day. So Trident of Fish Command, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. No. Yes. But it is. All right, I will add that to my inventory. It does require attunement. It does. So it'll just be in my inventory until we go on the sea, and then I'll equip it instead of my frost brand. And then I'm going to um, head out to the temple district. Yeah. I need to do some stuff there. All right, so you make your way out to the temple district. Uh, anything else? Or anybody else? Uh, sir, do you do see a... You do find a jeweler. Mm -hmm. It's called Crown Bijou. A crown jewel, huh? Um, let's see. Pardon me. It's not too far from where you were at. Outside, you've kind of noticed a few drunken revelers. Uh, it's a two-story building with brown shingled roof, roughly hewed wooden furniture. Uh, you see, once you go inside, there's like several battle shields hanging from the walls. Uh, contains an inviting hearth and various display of uh, display counters with gemstones. And behind, uh, beside the counters, kind of keeping an eye on the drunken revelers outside, appears to be a male male elf. And he is, description wise, dressed in a clean tan cloak, covering his clean. Well, he's actually apparently wearing silk leather. He is bristling with hidden weapons, mostly. Why the hell? Th apparently, this uh, this jeweler's probably been robbed before. Yeah. And uh, he's going to make sure he's definitely prepared in case somebody else decides to come by. His hair is silver and silky, and about moderate length. And he has amber eyes. And um, what would you like to do? So yeah. I'm going to go up to him and uh, I'm looking for a few things and I'd like to get something appraised as well. Uh, I'm looking for a gem encrusted bowl worth roughly, I think it's a thousand gold. Let me double check for Heroes Feast. I think it's a thousand gold. Why do we need that though? I thought we had the saddlebag now. The, the uh, feast he... actually gives you benefits. Uh, the yeah, saddlebag just feeds it. Yeah, Hero's Feast is completely different. Yeah, it's a thousand gold. It's a gem encrusted bowl worth a thousand gold piece. Huh. Oh, the DC for your one shot tattoos should be listed on the uh, the PDF. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a PDF? Oh, yeah, I shared it. I didn't realize you weren't looking at it. Um. The spell rot tattoos you got what level three? Those are fifteen spell saves. Okay. Yep. And the attack bonus is a plus seven. Uh, what was I? So you're looking for what exactly? Uh, a gem encrusted bowl worth roughly a thousand gold piece. I'm looking for maybe two of them. Hmm. Or I got some gems if you can encrust them into a bowl. 
it would probably be quicker to purchase them if you actually have the coin for it. I'm a... I... Well, I'm not going to show you whether or not I have gem-encrusted bowls worth that value without knowing that you can actually afford it. I'm going to set out on the table five gems. I have three black pearls worth 500 each, a blue spinal worth 500, and then a fiery orange genis, which is worth way more. I have these four that I was thinking about getting encrusted, but if you have some bowls already encrusted, I would be interested in trading. And then a... this one, I'm interested in getting appraised. Okay, so he takes one out, and a little glass sticks it up his eye, he's like, hmm, you get cut. Very nice, yes. Hmm. He puts it down, picks up the next. He repeats the process, doesn't say much other than, hmm, yes, with each gem. Okay, so, yes, I would say you can afford these. I, I, I have two, I do, for these gems here, and you want that one appraised. Yep, the fiery orange, uh, however it's pronounced, Jessen. Jessen? Or, just, yeah. It depends upon where you're from. Some people pronounce it Jessen, some people just sent. Either way, I will take a look at it. He picks it up, starts looking at it. Um, and where am I? There it is. He looks at it. Because we found a bunch of these. Seems to cock an eyebrow. Bunch. Look at you. Go back and look at it some more. Where did you find this? We had a, a run-in. Me and the group I'm with with a pretty nasty little wizard. Well, I can give you, well, I can tell you what it's worth, or I can tell you what I can buy it from you for. How much can you give me first, and then tell me what it's worth? Well, I'm, I'm a businessman, so I can only give you about <coughs> 2,500 gold for it. I might be able to go a little more, but not too much, Bill. Hmm. The rest of the party I'm with, we found a few of them, and we split them amongst each other, you know. So he said 2,500 is what he could do. Maybe more. Maybe Depending more. Depending on how convincing you can be. Not very. <laughs> so, so hold on, let me find out. Let me get his sheet brought up. Yeah. All right. So if you want to try to convince me to give you more, you can dicker if you want. Ah, uh, no, I think I'll just uh, take that appraisal as if at least that. And you're sure oh, you're sure it's worth more. If you're in if you're passive insights. Yeah. You're sure he's he's probably be worth twice what he's telling you. Yeah, I was just looking at my notes and then I just saw your roll after I said no, I don't think so. <laughs> it's like, now I'm looking at my notes, it's worth probably more. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's just giving you a DC to work with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At a minus one. Eh, nah. So, and then, yeah, I'm, I'd be interested in trading these four for the two gem encrusted bowls worth the 1,000 each. He goes back, comes back out with these two rather extravagantly um, gem encrusted bowls. Here you go. All right, and I'll take the Jacinth, trade the four gems off two bowls for hero feast that'll work and you kept the, the uh, gem yep okay. I kept the one just making sure Are you Hawk sure? wants to hit the shop it was a what the alchemy shop alright he wants to buy a, uh, he's got a, a flask of uh, alchemist fire 
And he's like, it'll be good to have two or three of these. All right, well, was... you done at the jewelry? Yeah. All right. Yep, and I'll head back towards the tattoo parlor to tell him what I've found out so far. All right, and of course, you know, out comes Rock, arms bare. You got the oh, yeah. shirt sleeves ripped off. <laughs> yep, got a flex. Got to show off a bit. He's not going to tear up his uniform. That's the property of, the, of Uncle Sam. But he uh, takes his shirt off. I'll let you know that the... Jen, she's working on your claws now. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you know as you're coming out um, about the poor fool that I just bankrupt. Um, maybe. About how much those gems were worth? Probably around 5000 when we found off the wizard. That's that big diamond I've got? Uh, if it's the big one that was uh, worth 1000 or one. whatever. I've got yeah, a the orange one that was worth like five grand. Yeah, but drop or whatever. you found... We found like five, didn't you? Five or something. Yeah, we found one per person, basically. Yep. Oh yeah, and then I've got, and I got the diamond tattoo. All right, so you make your way into the alchemy shop. Yep. So Ooh, it's, a, it's a busy day today. What can yeah, I do I'll, for you? I'd let Rock to know the guy that I sent him. I did tell him I might send some of the party along. Yeah, so I say, uh, Serge sent me. Yeah, yeah, I said, you're good to do business with. Serge? Oh, that's the shifter fellow that, that like, yeah. pretty much uh, sold me all this stuff. Yeah. Or, actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all I could afford, anyway. What can I do for yeah. you? I now, mean, I can't uh, buy anything, because I have no money to buy anything anymore. So, <laughs> sorry. Of course. Yeah, I figure you might need some money, and I, uh, I could use a few uh, potions of healing if you got magical stuff. Well, I mean, I have some potions of healing. Um, of course, I've got your basics. I have uh, at least two of those, which are running about 50 gold apiece. Um, and then I've got two special ones that are a little stronger. I have, oh, tell me more. Yeah, I have, well, I have a greater and a supreme. Ooh. Ooh. I would like that. Price out that greater healing. How much is one of those? Well, the greater's about 150, and uh, the supreme is about 550. A uh, couple of greater potions uh, for 300. I do that. Well, I only have one of each. Oh well, I'll buy the one potion of greater healing. <laughs> I do have two of the regular potions: one of the greater and one of the supreme. I like the idea that a party full of healers basically is still buying healing potions <laughs> yep yeah, it's tradition there's a chance oh. that we might run out somehow I think I'm the only one that can't heal so if all of you die I'll grab potions off your bodies and dump them down your throats or yeah, just take them and I'm... run or take them and run hey <laughs> yeah because yeah, I have two potions of healing on myself that I've um, I have some syringes I can put into your heart yeah, they're then... true we have those too <laughs> Other than the healing potions, is there anything else I can do for you? So uh, well, that's three hundred. If I get four of those alchemist fire, that uh, that's two hundred worth of that. So that's an even five hundred gold. Yeah, that works. You wouldn't happen to have uh, some other interesting potions? Uh, I heard well, of one that uh, lets you breathe out all your air and <sighs> blows things away. He's talking about the uh, uh, there's a potion of bottled breath. Okay, a potion that lets you breathe out all your air. Nope, I don't have one of those, I don't think, anyway. Um, where am I at? I a character in another game get the potion of bottle breath, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. <clears throat> now, I do well, have... the potion of bottle breath has multiple uses, because you can use it to breathe with, like a scuba diving tank, or you can, if you expend all the air at once, it creates a, like a, a gust effect. Well, yeah, I guess wind level spell which is pretty cool well like I told you I have the supreme that you didn't ask for I also have this one here this one here um, let's see it's called a potion of diminution I guess diminution diminution smaller yeah uh, when you drink this potion you gain the reduced effect of the enlarged slash reduced spell for 1d4 hours 
So red, red, the red in the potion's liquid continuously contracts to a tiny bead, bead and expands the color. The yeah. liquid around. Yeah, I've got a. I think you I've got, probably yeah, wizards that picked one of those up in a module, and then uh, several modules later, I got the potion of growth, and he's like, he's got the perfect match set. <clears throat> but uh, um, I suppose that could be interesting. But how much is it? Uh, let's see. That one is about seven fifty. How much does it reduce you? Yeah, Half size. It is the reduce. Oh, It'll bring, take you down a size category, I think, right? Yep. I'd be tiny if I took it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it will last <laughs> you. This one would last you Four three hours. hours. <clears throat> I'll buy it. Seven fifty. So I'm at twelve fifty. Why don't you barter with people? Not a barber. <laughs> Rock doesn't do that shit. He's like, oh, that's a He's an American. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, that's the price I buy it. Uh -huh. And then, of course, <laughs> yep. the only other you know, the only other good thing I've got is this one right here. And this one is. No, come on now. There we go. Uh, the potion he holds up to you looks like a transparent liquid that uh, has, has floating in it a sliver of a fingernail. Um, that is rather large. Looks like it's from a giant of sorts. Giant strength. Wait, I, I turn around and I pull out of my bag of holding it. I have a potion of giant strength that's filled giant strength. Does it look kind of like that one? Uh, it's got the toenail in it. You're, you said heel giant? Yeah. Let me look for the heel giant. No, that's clawed. Where's, where the fuck is heel? You remember... Uh, no, that's not going to tell you. I... No, exactly. I thought they looked the same, and there was just a table that had it. Well, this is actually they look it... similar. Uh, yeah, this is actually what it does. It, it all looks pretty much the same. It's just who, whatever toenail they got from which giant. It depends on how much strength you get from it. Mm -hmm. Oh right. Okay. Yep. Um. Rock's interested. How much? How much is that one? Well, this one here is a potion of frost giant strength, and it's about a thousand gold. Give him 500. Now, what this one will do is this one will um, it'll boost your strength up to the 23 for one hour. That's even better than the one I got. A uh, thousand bucks. Yeah, yeah, I got the money. Doing it. <laughs> yeah, because Hill Giant's only 21. All right, well, now I have two options to become super strong. Yep, and I think the best one to get is going to be Fire Giant, it looks like. There's Fire and, I think, is Storm Giant the strongest? I thought Storm Giant was the strongest. Uh, I think that... I'm uh, looking for it. I thought Storm Giant was 26. Hold on. Uh, uh, cloud Cloud Giant's 27. Uh, oh, it might, might be Cloud then instead. Storm Giant is the best. 29. 29. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, that's the type of belt we need for ducks. <laughs> The Storm Giant Strength Belt? I would love that. Yeah, because that would be, what, a plus nine on strength? But, oh, if I had 29 strength, it yeah. gives me a plus um, eight. Plus eight. Oh, and I, I needed to buy just a couple of regular antitoxin as well. Actually, no, I think it would be plus And you nine. bought the, yeah, the Frost Giant? because 30 would be 10. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to buy the Frost Giant. And you can go ahead and... Uh, Antitoxin, you can find the price set in the player's hand handbook, right? Yeah, yeah, that's 50 bucks each, so I'll get... You're good. Uh, I'll get four of those. <sighs> All right. <laughs> All right, and that's a good shopping day. So that's a grand total of... 2,000 and... Was that 2,250? Or a little higher? How much was that? Because of that portion of healing so it was 1800 150 for the greater healing 200 for alchemist fire 200 for any toxin 750 for diminution and a thousand for fire cross training strength hey buddy i hear a friend sold you some or bought some stuff i got some more oil pull out a half gallon <laughs> <laughs> see this weird tube too that's included. 
Only got nine more. <laughs> so pretty much we're playing Skyrim here. <laughs> Kinda. I mean, that's how I do it when I go to a vendor. I buy all the stuff I want, turn around and sell them the stuff I got. If yeah. there's still something well, else. I want to go find the crab from Morrowind. <laughs> the crab has unlimited gold. He'll buy everything. Okay. <laughs> all right, so are you you're wanting to sell another 2000 worth of oil? Uh, if I can, I'm just going to find my way around town trying to sell it until I get enough to get a plus two to an ability score. Unless someone else wants to join. I actually I want to go to a... I need is. to sell some scrolls and some miscellaneous stuff. I don't know if there's like oh, a pawn shop right. or something that I can sell stuff at. Oh, I'm actually getting district, my tattoo, I mean. right? Am I still getting my tattoo? You're still getting yours right now. All, All right. right, I want to barter with her too. I don't want to pay 500 straight. I want to see if I can get her to go down. You pissed her off. It's going to get bad for you. Okay. Oh, I'm paying after it's over. I haven't, I haven't paid yet. So you're wanting to barter. Oh, no. After it's done, when I'm getting ready to pay, I'm going to barter. Let me go find her. She's probably got an amazing charisma <laughs> score. All right, go ahead. All right. Do we give Dan a bunch of disadvantages? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, skills. I'm gonna so say. I need watch. to persuade. Mm-hmm. Persuasion. Do I get an advantage because I'm a halfling? No. Because she's a halfling too. I know, but she loves halflings, right? Because we're never said the, that. the same. She might just love money. Remember how I was talking about halflings around here, like. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're so cute. No. The price is the price. I'm sorry. Well, what if I traded in a favor, too? No. I'm sure you have to have something that you need done. I rolled a 17 to your 8. <laughs> I know. This is this is me continuing to try. I have a pretty strong party. You know, if there's something that you need done that you couldn't do yourself, it's a possibility we could get it done for you. I do tattoos. There's nothing else I concern myself with. You don't have any friends or odd jobs, people causing troubles? No, nothing that the guild doesn't handle. The guild? Ah, dang it. (laughs) Of course she's guild affiliated. There's a tattoo artist guild. No, there's... (laughs) We have a, 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 what is it? Uh, it's kind of a vendor's guild. Ah. Uh, well, I did have another question for you. I noticed that it's not something you listed on your wall or something, but I, I know that you can tattoo a magical spell that's good for one use. Yes. And so during the tattoo process, you're basically imbuing the person with this magical ability, correct? Yes. Is there any way that you could do a tattoo that would accept a scroll. So say that the caster cast a spell into it, and then you could cast it, but then they could put another spell back into it afterward. Um, so the spell is, so it's a reusable. Unfortunately, no. It's not like writing a... I mean, if you write a scroll and cast a, use, it, use a spell, once you've used a spell, the scroll disintegrates. The same happens I understand. With the tattoo. I understand. There's Just no saying, magic is magic. There's got to be a way to do it. Well, that's why you have the ones that recharge after an amount of rest. That's what I'm saying. Is there a way to make that happen with a spell? That's what the rest of the tattoos that I give you are. But no, I'm saying like fireball spell. Well, if you Third were, level cast, and, and then it recharges. To, and you want to recharge that. <sighs> I think I've ever tried to do a permanent fireball spell. I, I could be the guinea pig, and you could, I could do it. I could just do. You could do it for free. We could try it out. Mm. Good try, though, lad. Good try. I'll pay for the one use, and then you can try to make it permanent. We'll see if it works. 
<laughs> Boom. That <Yep>, didn't work. <laughs> yeah. Centered on the caster. <laughs> Those are Wild magic work. table. <laughs> hey, I'm fine with that. I get advantage on spell saves and I get half damage. I'll just run in and, and immolate right in the middle of them all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it goes. Automatically gives you um, um, vulnerability to fire. Yeah. No, the shadow step out, so I get hit, and then they all get hit. All right, <laughs> so uh, you're making your way towards the temple district. Corporal punishment. Yes, I am. All right, so when you're on your way to the temple district, let me see if I can find my stuff here. Oh, you meet a halfling. He looks a little worse for wear. I was just trying to bring up what I'm looking for. Okay. So, hmm, I don't, didn't actually put yours in there. So, you do find, I guess, nine separate temples spread out throughout the temple district. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to go into the first one and see if anyone uh, recognizes the Order of Merry Men. Now how obscure did we put yours? Um, well, generally only demon paladins would know about it. <laughs> Alright, so the first one you go into, you see a holy symbol. For it, it's basically a dagger pointed up, wreathed in purple flames. Now, if you want to give me a um, religion check, I'll tell you who that is. Okay. Good enough. Potentia, the goddess of mysticism and magic. Potentia is an exceptionally beautiful is is exceptionally beautiful with black hair and bright silver blue eyes. This is just the description you've been told what the goddess looks like. And she wears purple robes and wields a dagger. So you have walked into the first temple as the temple of pretty much magic. So you said she's the goddess of magic and mysticism. So you see uh, And what was the the symbol? Uh, dagger pointed up, wreathed in flames. And you see several robed individuals kind of walking around in there, uh, talking with people, helping people, but it seems that the robes are different shades of purple. I'm going to go up to one of them and ask him if they've ever heard of the Order of Merry Men and if there might be a temple around here for them. All right. uh, okay, this guy is like, uh, young fella, let's see. That's not working. How is that not working? Alright. Um, Alright. So, well, it's not changing my people. Uh, let's do this. So the fair-skinned individual, um, got a shaved head, amber eyes, walks is walking toward. You walk up to him. He's got a light purple robe on, and you ask him if he's ever heard of the Merry Men. He's, is that a bard group? It's a paladin group. I can't say that I've ever heard of it. 
Do you have any information of any other temple I could check to see? I mean, there are several temples in the district, my dear. Um, I'm kind of new to all of this, so I don't rightly know what they all are. Okay. I mean, well, you, I think you... Would you like to convert it to, to the Church of Potentia? Uh, no, thank you. Um, but I will give you a gold for your temple. Mm, potential guide you, my dear. Thank you. Now, um, let's see. You're getting your tattoos done on your hand. Anybody else getting a tattoo done right now? I was. All right, so you too. All right, so as you guys are in there, you know, a couple people come in and leave, and that weird music keeps changing periodically. Um, your hands are done, and she's working on May I now. You I'm getting a fifth level spell modified memory on my arm. I pay her 500 gold. Okay. As soon as it's done, I'm going to cast it on her. So if I can get DC 15. Uh, Hoping for that 5. Let's see. You decide to turn around and use it on her? As soon as she gets done. DC 15. So it's a will save? Yeah, wisdom. Well, I'll roll it, but, uh... Alright. She takes in a deep breath and just kind of huffs. Well... Just, just testing out, make sure it works. Yes, well... <laughs> uh, if I, I could... think we're done yeah. here um, okay. it's a shame you wasted that, that, that spell but I think we're done okay. good day sir good day that should have been my five by the way <laughs> <laughs> it should have been your what my five by the way what five the one you wrote before no that one's from Just... earlier <laughs> What were you trying to do? He's trying to modify our memory to say he actually paid for something else, I'm sure. Yeah. No, we cut away from the tattoo parlor. <laughs> All right, so uh, it's 11. Uh, we're going to leave off with uh, Corporal Punishment going to another temple, I'm assuming. And what's yep. everybody else doing other than... Uh, well, Brother May I was getting tattoos done, but once he got his first one done and used it, he uh, he's not getting any others. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, I need to go around. I'm trying going to try to find places to sell all the miscellaneous stuff that I have that I don't have a use for, like scrolls that I can't use and potions that I can't use. All right, so you're going to be trying to find places that will purchase your unused yeah. and unuseful items. I have magical items, some potions, and then a bunch of miscellaneous like jewelry statuettes and things like that. Get a list together of what you've got, and you can send it to me, or wherever. You can whisper it to me on here, and we'll take care of it uh, next week. Perfect. Serge and Sarge, anything you got? What you do from here on out? Where you at? I'm I need to be with ducks. All right, so you're with ducks, and you went ahead and bought all those potions that were left, so you now have those. Yep. All right, uh, and you did not want the supreme healing. No. Okay. No, I actually have a, a potion of superior healing that I picked up somewhere along the way, but supreme healing is a bit much. Well, supreme healing. Yeah, the superior healing is is uh, I think only six dice. Supreme healing is. <clears throat> anyway, I've got the superior healing. That's pretty good. So I, my mistake was it wasn't supreme. Yeah, it says supreme. It must be right. Oh, supreme twice. That had to be. It was superior. Because supreme would have been a hell of a lot more than six hundred fifty. Um, yeah. I was wondering why he was selling a supreme so cheap, but I wasn't going to say anything. Is the superior only six fifty? Seven fifty. 
Superior, uh, I sell for six fifty. That's actually not a bad price. Yeah, but for Supreme, six fifty would have been a really, yeah. really good price. Yeah, that would have been like two thousand. But uh... <clears throat> all I didn't know it was only six fifty. I'm going to get that portion of Supreme Healing too. All right, we'll go ahead and subtract that and add that. However you want to look at it. All right. <laughs> oh, you already sending me the information, huh? Yeah, I tried to whisper it, but instead it only whispered the first one, and the rest just went. Went. Yeah, because the carved ivory statuettes, bronze crown, filigrees, that the silver necklace, those I believe were one twenty-five. Because we found some more similar. If I remember okay. right. Oh, you got some venom sex. All right, yeah. so we'll try to. I might be asking our master, <laughs> master list again later, but uh, we'll go through that. Fucking and claymore. Try to sell <laughs> what you can. That's not a. That's not the sword. That's an explosive yeah. device claymore. <laughs> yeah. you see this claymore? Yeah. Let me, let me take a look. Why does it say do not eat? <laughs> 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 All right, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, we, got, we got a few people. And uh, you catch us this Friday. We're going to be doing um, Hunter Reckoning for a little while, and then we'll pick up back on Season 3, of, uh, uh, Chapter 3 of the uh, Red Star Rising campaign. Next Sunday, we'll continue our shopping with, my, with our players here and see. Maybe we'll get back on mission. If we're doing all this, it must be headed for some real danger. I gotta oh, wait for my God. stuff to be made, so yeah, you I can't really least, leave. You at least a day and a half. But thank you all for watching. We, so we also need to ask around to find that guy being tortured, right? He's probably already dead. <laughs> yeah, he's already dead. Yeah. We missed it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, what's your plan? Hey, I'm looking for a guy that's being tortured. I've been you know, about two years. These black mages, you know, I'm just going to ask all the wrong questions. In black robes with deep hoods, and they were torturing people? (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, we'll see if they get back on track next week or whatever track they get on. But tune in. Uh, Thanks again for joining us. Remember what I always say. We're in this together. So, come on. Let's love each other and help each other out. So until then, y'all take care. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks for watching. You in August. <laughs>